squatter's rights was what his buddy Ray would announce before doing something horrible to him with feces. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the judge. Get it on. Get it on. Orny Adams back in studio. Good to see you, my friend. Great to see you, too. Um, Orny, we got stuff Thank to get you. into. It's going to be at Kimmel's Club in Vegas coming up April 18th. And then uh, Hollywood. Oh, it's going to be the Kookaburra Lounge. That's where I'm going to be at some point uh, for Netflix is a joke. That'll be uh, May 4th. And you can go to ornyadams.com for all the info. Orny, what's on your mind? I was, I was almost late. I apologize. Mm-hmm. But I saw, I was about to leave, and then on the news came out a story about these three sailors that uh, were shipwrecked. Do you have this, Chris? No, I don't. Okay, so they, they shipwrecked, uh, and they wrote in the sand, this is how they, they got them, help. Mm-hmm. And I was angry that they didn't write SOS. Mm. It's an extra letter. A whole yeah. extra letter. It's mm-hmm. a whole extra letter. They use and, leaves. Mm-hmm. And they use leaves, and uh, SOS is a palindrome. So mm-hmm. now... <laughs> I should be in my car to come see you guys, but now I'm researching palindromes. Mm-hmm. And not only is it a palindrome, but it's what I'm going to call a super palindrome because SOS upside down is SOS. Help upside down is blah. Yeah, yeah, you're right. That's not a mistake. Effective. We shouldn't have saved. Well, I think we should have given them two days to think about it before we saved They them. were abandoned for three days. So you're saying you just leave them there? A couple extra days so they could <laughs> yeah. think about it for next time. Yeah. Do you, you know think, what I, mean? I mean, they're a little bit under duress, so I, I give a little... The human body's capable of a lot. They could have lasted another 48 hours. Then I'm driving over here, and as I'm running red lights, so I'm not too late. Mm-hmm. You know, someone almost died today because I'm curious about palindromes. Mm. I found myself angry that the word palindrome is not a palindrome. Mm. Why? You're right. Why is a palindrome not a pa- the word palindrome not a palindrome? Just makes me think the people who invented the language didn't care, mm. really didn't care. It's palindrome. Yeah, Drome with an M. Yeah. You know, I'm always just slightly ten <laughs> percent off from intelligent. Pal- I'm all, all, all good comedians are that way. It's you know my I had I have that name in my family. I have a palindrome. In my family, my my what grandparents, my grandfather, who uh, my step grandfather, who I love dearly, the uh, Hungarian Jew, his mm. last name was Gorog, oh. and Gorog is spelled the same way, front and back. Yeah, right. So we had that going for That's us. That's a palindrome. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It's like, do you remember when I was on this show and I I said the Columbine for the, the NFL? Columbine. For the oh, NFL? Oh, oh, the combine. Combine. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get. Look, look. There's too many words. Too many words. And there's they introduce forty of them every year, and we're supposed to remember, you know, Latinx or Latinx or mm-hmm. whatever. They just keep introducing stuff. Yeah. They didn't introduce new words all through the '70s. There wasn't much you had to you had to come up with. Now you're charged with memorizing. All these new words, and I don't like it. I don't it's like too it, much. but I am a little concerned about myself that I just spent so much time reading about palindromes, and I come on here excited to discuss it, and I embarrass myself by saying par- palindrome. It's, uh, again, we give you grace. You're yeah. a comedian. I'll tell it's you what exciting. I thought about yesterday. What would you think about? I believe there are words that are too close to each other mm-hmm. that mean the opposite of each other. Mm-hmm. And uh, I always cite push and pull. P-U, mm-hmm. four letters. People hit that diner door with yep. gusto and they smack it into the thing because it's P-U. Right. It's just, it's there's two, they're too similar. They should be further apart. We should be able to read them sort of rhythmically without actually sounding them out, you know? Right. And then yesterday... After all these years on this planet, I realized another thing that means the opposite of one another that are way too close are dusk and dawn. Mm. Like I was talking to someone on the phone. 
I was walking yesterday, and it was like uh, it was like seven fifteen, seven thirty in the right. evening. And they said, "Oh, it's getting dark out there." And I said, "Yeah, it's du- it's uh, dawn. Uh, I mean, it's dusk." It- yeah. They're too close. Yeah. They they mean the opposite. I agree because I have a lighting app, and on my lighting app, when I have to set it, I always have to sit there and like dusk or dawn. I have to. It's too much of a mental the, the, calculation. These people don't care. The other I'll give you, go the ahead. other one is when you turn on the news, you're watching the scroll of the politician, and it says representatives R E P. I, I think Republican. That must oh. be. A it's always a a, a Republican. Oh. Also, Tuesday and today get me get me screwed up too with the, with emails. We need to write. You know the other one screws me up. East and West. They really? shouldn't do est. They shouldn't be four <laughs> letters and end with the same two. When you're doing seventy five miles an hour and you're looking down at your phone and you go, "Am I getting on the a, a one eighty east or the one eighty five west?" And you're like, "It's a it's a moment." They should be. Spread way the fuck apart. <laughs> so what should north, the east should be what, west should be what? North and south are fine. Yeah, no even, problem there. Even though they still have the th. Yeah. At the at the end, but they need to be for one. Okay, here's the thing. They can, like push and pull. Mm-hmm. They can't have the same number of letters. One should just be long and the right. other should be short. I agree. I agree. Here's another one that is further proof that whoever came up with language doesn't care. Right, doesn't care. Audio, A-U-D-I-O, but video, sounds mm. the same to me, is V-I-D-E-O. Yeah, that's wrong. And why? Why? Well, can I tell you the worst? And I don't want to know what the Latin root is. I don't give a <laughs> shit. I don't think the Latin people knew what they were doing. They didn't have we video cameras. We give them cameras. such respect. I know. And you want a good push-pull situation? Yes. The, the uh, Poquito Moss on Coanga, okay? Mm-hmm. It's uh, when you go into an establishment, what do you do normally? You, you probably pull the door open, right? I, it's, it's, a, it's catch as catch can. Oh. I'm a pull. Your pull. I'm a yeah, pull. pull. Pull safe. Okay. This is a push situation. Mm-hmm. I would say I go there all the time mm-hmm. and I always screw it up. Yeah. And then I sit there as I'm waiting for my order and I hear the door. Right. At right. what point do the Paquito Moss geniuses say, oh, you know what? Let's, uh, let's switch the hinge. Yeah. Listen. And make it a pull, which is the, the norm. Push and yank. Has another one. That's what it should be. It should just say yank. How about this one? Clockwise, counterclockwise. Yeah. When they go, oh, turn it counterclockwise. Well, look. Now my, there's some thought that has to go into that. Clockwise in it. Micro and macro are too, <laughs> too close. Yeah. Too close yeah. as well. I got to yeah. jump in here with one that bothers mm. me. Stress and distress. Mm. They both mean stress. Yes. Yeah. All right. There are a couple like that. There's another one, and I can't. Uh, uh, well, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do one to to beat the band. Oh, I didn't know. I didn't so, know it was a competition. There's a competition <laughs> okay. here. Street names. Yeah. I went to Bobby Kennedy. I went to his birthday thing yeah. about uh, I don't know a month and a half ago, and it was up in the hills, and up in the hills, and they do this a lot. Uh, Seth MacFarlane has this at his house, just a name drop. But they'll do a lot of, you take Bluebird Lane, and then that goes to Bluebird Circle, right. and then that goes to Bluebird Drive. Right. And I literally went, a oh, Bluebird, oh, we're here, we're here. I'm looking at the address on, right. on Waze, and it's like, oh, we're on Bluebird. And I stop, and I had to walk a mile and a half, because I kept going, Oh, it's another bluebird, which is right next right. door to this bluebird. We have one out here, Santa Monica. We have big Santa Monica and little Santa right. Monica. What? What? Why are we naming things? They're lazy. They're lazy. Go to Atlanta. Every other street is Peachtree. Oh, Peachtree yeah. intersects Peachtree, like yes. major intersections. Mm. You know, the and word. here we have we had rodeo and then rodeo, yeah. spelt the same. Yes. The, yes. the rich people in Beverly Hills call it Rodeo here, right? Uh, the, down in, uh, yeah. Well, on the other side of your house, mm-hmm. where you live, on the downside, on the valley side, that's where they have all the Donna streets: Donna Dolores, Donna Sangria, Donna Pegida, Donna, uh-huh. Donna, Donna. And it's like, don't start it with the same word yeah. every single street. It's 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 the height of confusing, and it flies in the face of naming streets. It's it's lazy. 
It's like these people with language, they don't think it through. And then you know what happens? We have the burden, the burden of trying to understand all this stuff. Next thing you know, you're so confounded mm-hmm. that you're calling it a paladrone. Right. The column, by, by the way, one, one listener had a uh, had a pretty uh, edgy uh, response when uh, I I mistook the uh, I called it the Columbine instead of the combine, mm-hmm. and he said, "I'm sure Tom Brady would have run faster <laughs> <laughs> if there were shots <laughs> at, fired at the Columbine." That's at, true. At, at, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I know you. But who at- names a high school? Uh, to, you know. Okay. Go ahead. Right. Sorry. Um, Fired up. There's also a rifle called a carbine as well, like a military rifle. So Columbine, carbine. I, all right. Here's my I think point. It's an M4. Yeah, it's an M4. There you go. Someone does books. Someone narrates spy books. Lots of military stuff. Um, all right. So, Orny, I know you were traveling through the airport. Yeah. And I know you're looking at the Terrazzo like I do. I marvel at the Terrazzo. Yes. I love Terrazzo. Some of the best. Some of the best. Yeah. yeah. It's it's really the best. This country at its strongest yeah. is Terrazzo at the airport. Yeah. Just endless, an endless sea of, of blue Terrazzo that then gives way to a beige Terrazzo. Yeah. Some better than others, but I love the Terrazzo. I've scouted Terrazzo. Mm-hmm. I've, I know all the different applications for Terrazzo. Yep. They now make large-scale Terrazzo tiles you can put in your house that are essentially five foot by ten foot, like you, like bigger than a sheet of plywood, so you can have that airport yeah, that experience. Feeling. I want terminal I, feeling. Yeah. When I build my new house, I'm putting Terrazzo in it, and when I walk from one room to the other, I'm going to use roller luggage. Mm. <laughs> I'm going to feel <laughs> I like, like I'm on the move. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'll put my dog on a leash, and I'll put a little service animal vest yeah. on him, and I'll have my lo- just going from the den into the living and, room, just feeling like can. I'm at an airport. And just have just announcements over a PA. Unnecessary. Yes. Unnecessary. You know, for the people that can't find their gate in 2024. Right. right. We, have right. To, we have to page people. If you can't find your gate on time, right. the plane's got to leave. Why is right. Terrazzo caught on in more public places? It just feels like it's just strictly airports, maybe T- malls. Terrazzo is exceedingly expensive. And the way they do it at the airport is like the most expensive way you can do it. What a waste. Which is they take... Now, so the thing about tile is, you know, two foot by two foot or 14 by 14 or the bigger scale stuff Mm -hmm. or whatever. But you got to have your grout lines in it. So everybody, when you're laying out something that is cement-based or cement itself... You have to have expansion joints in it. You can't just go 20 feet. It'll crack in the middle. You have to kind of break it up. Right. You know what I mean? And even then, you'll see the, like you'll see someone's driveway, and there'll be expansion joints built in like every five feet, but there'll be a crack in the middle of, of one I've of the that. slats. I've everyone that. everyone has nuts. that. So Terrazzo, you can go like 20 feet without an expansion joint. And what they do is they pour the slab, so you just have the straight cement or concrete slab. Talk to Chris, because I know this stuff. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know. Direct thing to Chris. And then they'll lay out pieces of aluminum oftentimes, just like fins that are like an inch high, and they'll do it all. Then they'll put this color in this bay and that color in that bay, but they trowel it on, They it's liquefied, mm. and they pour it all in. And then it self-levels. Then they have to take a crazy diamond grinder and they have to grind it all and then grind it again and then Mm. like wet sand it and polish it and whatever. So it's crazy labor. Just perfectly flushed. So if it's in your house and you're thinking about Pergo hardwood versus Terrazzo, the Terrazzo is going to be 75 bucks a square foot versus eight bucks a square Mm. foot or whatever. Super expensive. Now they're making top. Airport's got the budget for it. And the reason the airport does it is because it's indestructible. Okay. I mean, if you think about what you need from an airport, guys dragging all the wheelie luggage, dogs shitting everywhere, mm-hmm. <laughs> bitches running for their airplane, holding the Frappuccino, and it's slopping over yeah. the top. Everyone, Everyone's at their worst. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Everyone's abusive. They're throwing stuff on the ground. They're shooting snot rockets down. They're filling water bottles. It's overflowing. They just mm-hmm. leave it. They, it has to be indestructible. Ah. You can't have Berber carpet yeah. in an airport. It would immediately be destroyed. Well, have you been to Burbank? Yeah. Burbank has no less than 17 different kinds of carpets. Yes. They, it's a it's a mismatch. It looks like a fraternity house. They have house. to replace them all yeah. the time. But, they, I mean, it just doesn't even... I, I took, I took I a video once. I was astonished at how many different... I don't count them as a real airport because they don't have terrazzo. Yeah, they're not. I, you guys will get my vote when you get some terrazzo. Yeah, grow up, your, Burbank. Yeah. There's two things I love about Burbank when you go into Burbank, when you, when you pass security. One is the three-wheel cop trike yeah. that's off to the right that no one's ever on. Always there. Because you can get from one end of Burbank Airport to the <laughs> other in 41 seconds. Yeah. So yeah. there's no reason for transportation. Yeah. But yet, there it sits. Right. And, you know, it costs the taxpayers $45,000. <laughs> yeah. And it's that the battery's dead, one tire's flat. Yeah. And there it sits. For the world's laziest cop. Yeah. Like, I mean, literally, you can make it from one end to the other in Probably a Probably take a more time to get on the thing, start the thing, yes. train yourself how to drive it because it's <laughs> never been driven. If if a terrorist <laughs> made a run for it yeah. and you decided to get on the cop trike, he'd be in deep Glendale, maybe Pasadena, yeah. by the time <laughs> you've got that thing moving. No, it looks like it looks like a mall cop. Yes, it's Paul Blart. Yeah. yeah. Okay, it's a Paul Blart. It's yeah. a joke. Yeah. All right. That thing I like, Mm -hmm. but my favorite thing is the bronze statue of Amelia Earhart. Yes. Well, they have a whole museum there. They have a whole thing (laughs) where she, it's Amelia Earhart, and she's standing there, and she's leaning against a propeller. And I'm getting onto a Southwest flight, and I'm thinking, oh, great. This is a person who died in an airplane yeah. leaning against a part of her airplane that broke off upon impact. Yeah. And we never found her. And we never found her. Not brimming with confidence. No. Now. I'd like to see someone <laughs> put Lindbergh out there. No. Sure, he hated the Jews, but he made it. Yeah. You know what I Haven't mean? Haven't you been to the restaurants where you walk in and there's a poster with the history of salmonella? Yeah, that's what it is. <laughs> plus, plus, I realize... No one under 50 knows what that statue is. Right. Like, you know, there's some 28-year-old dude going, uh, meet me by the picture. Okay, there's a statue of a dude leaning against an oar. I'll meet you there. I like how they have it blocked off because there have been security issues. People trying to get too close. Well, to that's the, the, But by the way, isn't bronze indestructible? I mean... <laughs> that's the other comedy. The other what? comedy of it is they put a, a, a velvet rope around it. It's right, a Studio 54. And they put stanchions and a velvet rope around it, <laughs> but it's so close that you could lean over and touch it without touching the velvet rope, which yeah. I say, null and void now to velvet rope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it just makes me want to now touch it. Yes. yes. I had no desire to touch Amelia Earhart. No. Until I no saw that. No man ever did. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, that's not what you wanted. But she's gone. And that's the last thing you see before you get onto yeah. your flight, someone who didn't make it. Yeah. Well, I want to see someone who made it. She went down a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a documentary about, like, they thought they had solved mm-hmm. the, the, the mystery of Amelia Earhart. And I thought, I don't care. Yeah. Nor would I ever believe it. Oh, they, there is some recent stuff where somebody yeah. found her plane. No, they didn't. They they think they found part of it on like Easter Island or something like that. Uh, they somebody and some look and some sonar or something yeah, like about sonar. three months ago like found her plane. Do you think it's too soon to do Amelia Earhart? The movie? It, it just jokes. Is it? Uh, oh. Is it still, still sensitive? No, I think I think we're we're a testament to that. Oh, I have great news, and then so we'll wait, get back to the second. airport. Wait, wait, but I you. Have, you yeah, you spotted somebody cleaning Terrazzo with a well, tennis ball. Well, yeah, this, uh, th- what happened was, on the last time I was on this show, we went over in great detail all the different uses for tennis balls off of the tennis court. And right. my flight's delayed. I look up and I see this, <laughs> a tennis ball and a stick, them cleaning the floors. And I go, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> Another That's- use for a tennis ball? Yeah. 
I think the other use for a tennis ball is when actors are acting with CGI and they have to react to a T-Rex oh, or something. They, the maybe ball. they got the stick with yeah. the tennis ball on it from the studios. But Explain what you're seeing. Right okay, now. so what it is is there are scuff marks from the luggage. And I witnessed this. I watched this several times. There was a woman <laughs> doing it too. I, I saw this and I thought that maybe this guy invented it. And this was his, it's a one-off. Could be. So I was delayed two hours. So I walked around the airport yeah. and I found another woman doing it too. And what they do is they spray some magic solution on the ground. Right. Not sure what it was. I did go up and approach this this gentleman. <laughs> right. Uh, we had a communication error. Not a lot of English. Not, right. uh, and he thought maybe I was doing like a YouTube prank or something or TikTok. And then they scrape the stain and it actually comes off. Can I make this... Uh assertion slash challenge is there anybody who does less traveling per capita like as an american than people who work at the airport meaning the average person you travel a lot because mm -hmm. your business i travel a lot because of my business but the average american does a fair bit of traveling far less for the guy who cleans up the scuff marks at the airport and I'll say TSA security. I just don't feel like if, if there's ever a segment that the 19 year old chick who's working at the Cinnabon, mm -hmm. the guy who's cleaning the bathroom, mm -hmm. the guy's cleaning the scuff marks with the tennis but ball. But what do you mean travel a lot? They, they just drive to the airport where they work. What do you? But they never get on a. <laughs> yeah, I mean travel. They don't travel is what you're saying. Oh, am I saying don't travel? I'm yep. saying they they travel less. Was yeah. that oh, okay. They don't want to go back to work even when I, they're not on the clock. I'm saying it's ironic that they work at an airport yeah. and never get on an airplane. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and maybe they're angry because mm -hmm. of it. Maybe it's us. Maybe. maybe. Would, would this be like a comedy club booker that didn't have a sense of humor? Well, that's pretty ubiquitous. <laughs> <laughs> right. But... To say like who what like what group travels less like if you said attorneys who travels more attorneys or people who work at the airport then you can get into a right. price thing but I'll bet you people so you go okay well now we're talking about income so obviously people with more income are going to travel more but I will bet you your average school teacher who makes fifty three thousand dollars a year travels way more than your average airport TSA worker who makes $53,000 yeah, a year. Yeah, but you have to put an asterisk here mm -hmm. because flight attendants, crew, people like that do fly a lot, and they work at the airport. But I don't think they work at the airport. They go through the airport and, and get on a get on a plane. Yeah. You know, I'm talking about full-time, show up every day. Down on the tarmac with the yeah. flashlight, the, the vest handlers. on, the luggage handlers, TSA, security in general, all the maintenance people, all the cleaning up of the scuffs on the terrazzo. Yeah. I think as a whole, they don't travel a lot. Here's another thing. If you work at like a store like Apple or something, you get an employee discount. Mm. Mm. I bet employees of the airport, besides food, they don't get a discount off of flights or no, but, but neither do teachers, and I think they end up traveling more. Mm. Here's another one. Mm. You're not signing off on this? Not yet. Not convinced, but that's okay. <laughs> Who travels that's, less? You know, you'll, you'll get me. You you'll get me find by me the a group that travels less uh, through airports. That's what I'm saying. First off, they don't have any business. A teacher or fireman may have a convention mm -hmm. somewhere. There's no airport worker convention. But don't you think that guy cleaning the floors, he jumps on a plane every once in a while and goes, visits his family wherever they are? I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't happen. I'm saying per capita, if the average American... Ugh, Let's take a survey. Okay. If the average American travels 8,000 miles a year. Yeah. Or 6,300 miles a year, whatever that number is, the average American, I would say employees of the airport, ironically, are way below the median. Well, average. let me explain this, That's okay? What I would because say. I'll exp this will lend into your argument, okay? Uh, employees at the airport, if they ever traveled, would never want to be at the airport. Like, we travel so much. We hate the airport so much. The last place we would ever want to work is the airport. Yes. 
So that's why they work at the airport. Okay. Are you not? Are you not signing no, off? No, I think they. <laughs> I, I, I think they work at the airport because they have to. They got nothing else going. Okay. That's uh, that's what. Seems, that's a generalization. Seems to me. I'm not. It is. I'm not that's there. What I'm I not do. quite that's there what all yet. Comedians do. We yeah. generalize. I, we do. <laughs> that's our job. <laughs> yeah, not all Asian drivers are slow. No, no, we make Boy, that's a throwback. Speaking of working yeah. at the Apple Store. Yeah. And maybe not. Having a Mac computer or whatever we're talking about. Yeah. Tell me if this throws you off. It does already. All right. I'm in Manhattan many years ago, and I'm going through the she-she area of, like, you know, I don't know, Soho or something, or some cool part, you know. And my friend says, we should go to the $50,000 mattress store. They had a store called a $50,000 mattress store. Hmm. And they, he, we went in. And he said, you know, lay down on the mattress. Of course, you got the guy down on the showroom floor, and he's a salesperson. The lowest. And I'm laying down on it, and I'm going, hey, it's 50,000, but I'm not going to spend 50,000 bucks on a mattress, but it does feel pretty good. But I imagine some people will. And he says, I got one of these at home. Mm. And I thought, well, wait a minute. (laughs) You're making. $14 Fourteen dollars an hour. Yeah. How how is it that you get a fifty thousand dollar mattress? Right. I mean, you're you're at the bottom of the food chain at the mattress store here. You just walk around the floor. The guy's twenty three, you know, and he goes, "I got one." Yeah. Now I'm thinking, either he's lying, or they gave him a forty six thousand yeah. dollar discount, yeah. which means the mattress is only worth that. I think you, you he's know lying. what I'm saying. I think, I think it's like lying. that that scene in Boogie Nights. Where the guy is selling the stereos, the yeah. porn star, and he's like, I got one of these at home. But you know he doesn't. So should you be saying that if you're at the $50,000 no. mattress There's store? There's no integrity, ethics, or morals in mattress sales <laughs> ever. Ever. I no. bought a mattress. The guy said, you have 30 days to bring it back if you don't like it. Say, I had the mattress before. Then they deliver the mattress. It clearly felt different than the one in the store. Then they're going to tell you, oh, but the one in the store, you know, thousands of people have laid on, so they've broken it in. Just give it some time. And he would not let me return it. Oh, really? Would not let me uh, exchange it for another one. They have no integrity. Not to mention, you open up half of those things, and it's got uh, you know recycled children's clothing in there. I know this sounds obvious, but you do know you have to lay on it when it's flat, not up on its edge, right? Oh. <laughs> let gravity do its thing, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. You should ask for the floor model. Get a discount, and you know that that one is... Yeah. I don't want the, the one that uh, the, the <laughs> plebeians... The commoners <laughs> were laying. I don't want the test mattress. Um, all right, so back to the flooring debacle. Yeah. Now, I mean, not you know. Look, it, I love terrazzo. I love it. You just like saying it. I love saying I'm Italian. It, you know, but I it like just it. Rolls off your tongue. It's like effortless. It's, it's, it's it could get you laid. You could go out and just <laughs> hey, let me. Uh, let's. I want to talk about terrazzo. Can I tell you when I I actually got wood is when I was at the big home convention in Vegas. I thought you are talking about something else. And I was talking about, uh, not hardwood, but uh, boner. And I was talking about the large scale terrazzo sheets. Yeah. But I said, I want the cove molding on the baseboard. I want it to cove up Mm. and go up a circle, a quarter circle to go up. And he said, oh yeah, we got that. So meaning there's no corner. When you mop your floor, you don't wedge all the dirt in from the edge of the floor to the baseboard where there's that crease. Turn Mm. your house into a skateboard. And it's dirty in there. Yeah, you turn it into a half pipe. Yeah. And, And you could almost just hose off your living room if you had that. Like put a drain in the middle, like a monkey cage. But, let me tell you something that uh, that did bother me. I have a picture of it. Chris, Chris, said, I was in Reno. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was at a very nice hotel Why? in Reno. What? They have a nice hotel they in Reno? They have a nice hotel in Reno. What hotel is nice in Reno? Oh, God. I've got to think of the name. of the, We'll think of it. Sheridan or something. I don't remember. It was nice. Okay. And, uh, and, and I had the suite on the eighth floor. So I had the full suite. And they're treating me like a big shot. You are. And I had my cars there at the Reno Automobile Museum. And I was sitting on the toilet and I looked down and I saw something that horrified me in the tile department. Uh, uh, Use tampon? No. It was tile 
and you can show me the second shot too. It was tile that was cut. Now we'll go in close. I always give the far one first, and then the close one second. It'll give you some uh, some context. Now, yeah, I can tell this is a really nice hotel. This is <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is this? The, the days in? No, I was in a beautiful suite in a nice hotel, but they had to cut the tile around the doorstop for where the bathroom toilet was. And instead of making a cut, they made a whole bunch of small cuts and then snapped it off. It looks like a dragon's mouth. It, teeth. Uh, it looks like it has teeth. It, I, it drives me insane. Insane. Did you? I would like to know if it's like that in every room or, or you just got the... You, no, I, I should have checked. And it's a suite, which you would think should get the VIP treatment. Mm-hmm. The problem with the blade, everybody, is the blade is round. And in order to get to where you want to get to, it has to go past. No, they know the this. Line you, you don't have to, to. Don't talk down to Cut your the listeners. Cut the tile. Turn it upside down. Yes. Turn it upside down on the wet saw, and then make your incisions. And your incisions can go past because it's the bottom. Yeah. That's the way you do it. It's. I mean, it's Clean bad way. enough that you're in Reno, but this is the view from the toilet. I was disgusted. It's a slap in your face. Oh, my God. You've done too much in this career I to have almost... this shit. You want to know what happened to me in Chicago? Hmm. I check in. Fancy hotel. Mm. I don't know if it's as fancy as the days in here in <laughs> Reno, mm-hmm. but I walk in. It's mm-hmm. late at night. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. like 10 p.m. I'm exhausted. I just want to go to bed. Mm. And in the corner is a pair of dirty socks. Of your room. Yeah. Somebody else's dirty socks. Now, what confidence does that give me in the cleaning crew? Not a whole hell of a lot. So I wake up in the morning, and outside in the hall is uh, the supervisor Mm -hmm. of, uh, you know, the cleaning crews. Mm -hmm. How do I know this? She had a clipboard. Clipboard. Official. Official. Dead giveaway. Mm-hmm. You do not see common people walking around hallways without with a clipboard. <laughs> mm-hmm. I said, this is someone I should uh, discuss the matter with. Absolutely. She said very nicely, how's everything with your room? I said, uh, well, actually, when I checked in last night in the corner, there's a pair of dirty socks from the last person that stayed here. Now, you assume they're dirty. Yeah, I don't. they're broken apart and they're in the corner. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, we don't know 100%, but probably. You didn't sniff them. No. Okay. No. So she said... Even later when you were masturbating? <laughs> you didn't... Uh, that's what it was probably used for by the last person. Um, and I said, listen, and I told her the situation, because she was a, she cared to ask. She asked. Yeah, right. And uh, she went like this. She said, thank you, and then just walked away. Mm. She didn't care. She mm, didn't care. Okay. Yeah. And I spent the entire weekend. I didn't want to. I was working so much. Uh, I was doing a Team Wolf convention, so I had no time to myself. No, I no. stayed with. I slept three nights in a row with those dirty socks, feet away from my. Didn't bed. move them. Didn't move them. Didn't. Uh, but here's the thing: they comped all my breakfast. Oh really? <laughs> yeah, for the weekend. Wow. Yeah, like $150. Those dirty wow. socks save wow. me 150 Doesn't that excite you? I'm thinking about <laughs> planting dirty socks next time I travel. Well, I mean, yeah. People used to do it with the roach in the, at dinner, right? The fake bug. Yeah. The I don't want to disgust your, uh, your viewers and uh, oh, listeners. I might put a sock in my soup. <laughs> Go for it. You know what I mean? Like Gilda really Lily. <laughs> Hardcore. So, I've now become convinced that they do not change the sheets in between every stay. Okay, what they do is they do the least amount possible. And then COVID kicked in. And when COVID kicked in, that was everyone's excuse to do nothing. Mm -hmm. Airlines, schools, school teachers, kids, Mm -hmm. hotels, cleaning of the hotel, everything they didn't want to do, COVID gave them a path Mm. to not do it. Now, it was all stuff they didn't want to do. Right. In the first place, but they didn't have a viable excuse. And it's it's like I've I've said many times, I'm sitting in first class, I'm on I'm on a United flight, I, I order a drink, and I go, give me vodka, soda, water, and lemon, and they go, We don't we don't have lemon. And I go, Why why no lemon? They go, COVID. <laughs> and then I go, How's what what's lemon have to do with COVID? And yeah. she just goes, I don't know. Yeah. And she just left. But what it has to do with COVID is they didn't want to do the lemons right. in the first place. That's how that's how and it's insane because mm-hmm. be like, 
you saying to your uh, lady, listen, I don't take out the garbage or eat puss anymore. This is COVID related. Well, I do say that. Oh, you As do? a matter of fact, oh, okay. yeah. Yeah. Okay, I either yeah. blame COVID or I say it's a supply chain issue. Yeah. That's, that's my other that's excuse. That's... Supply chain issue. So all COVID was was an excuse. School teachers always wanted to stay home and get paid. COVID ushered that era in. Airlines never wanted to cut up a bunch of lemons and limes and serve them in first class. COVID ushered that in. Hotel chain owners Mm -hmm. didn't want to have to clean the room and do the towels every single day. That COVID ushered that in. So just one big fat excuse to not do stuff they never wanted to do in the first place. Part of the problem is when you complain, because I'll tell you what happened in Michigan, when you complain, they sort of gently explain to you how hard it is to get help now, which isn't my problem. (laughs) Right. But I got into the bed in Michigan at this hotel and there was sand (laughs) in the bed. Sand. Sand. Mm. So they're one of the Great Lakes. Yeah, one of the Great Lakes was in bed with me. <laughs> I'm going to Haran. Yeah, they gave me a free night. Really? For sleeping with sand. Again, I'm exhausted. They're like, do you want to switch rooms? I'm like, it's late. I just, you know. And uh, yeah, I, I don't, I'm now convinced that they walk in. So if you're a business traveling, you're there for one night and you're a, a semi clean person, I think they look at the sheets and they go, I can just. Tuck it back back in. in, Yeah. Yeah. And you think they're changing every pillowcase? No. Towels? How often do you, is there a hanging like hand towel and you just sort of touch it one time? That's not getting changed. No. No. They're doing the least amount humanly possible and maximizing their profit. Yeah. That's what I just assume everyone is doing all the time. Yeah. So here we are. But. I'm still kind of intrigued that you left the socks in the corner for the full three-day duration. Got me free breakfast. All right. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It's a business move. I get it. It's a business move. Shrewd. That's, and listen, you didn't get where you are by bussing socks. Yeah. And not eating for free. No. And I didn't want anybody in the room. I don't like them in there. I don't like that. When I'm, I go in, I shut the, I put that thing on the door, leave me alone. Yes. And and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Women love to have that room cleaned every day. It's bizarre. I don't I don't know if it's a cleanliness thing or it's a some other bitch is doing something for me mentality. Mm. And I'll give you a perfect example. Yeah. They love the pedicure. They love the pedicure. Yeah. And all that is is some poor beleaguered 50-year-old Asian woman like scrubbing on their feet and yeah. soaking and then pushing cuticles yeah. and then scrubbing. And I'm like sort of generally uncomfortable with the process of having someone work on my feet right. that way. Yeah, you know, just sitting. Yeah, yeah, it's like relaxing. there's somebody from some horrible war-torn country that yeah. has come here and now I'm going to sit in a vibrating recliner and she's going to push my cuticles around and pick the toe jam out from under the nail there and clip and then do like some salt rub mm-hmm. on it or something. It generally feels weird. Like, like to That's me, why I don't get my shoes shined. Yes. Hey, like, black guy. You sit out your buff rag. It's so racist. Your when I see those at the <laughs> airport, know, it's a, never an old white guy shining the shoes. <laughs> right. And I, I, I think, oh, don't you don't do this. Nobody right. needs it, their it, shoes it, it, shined in between flights. Right. But I realize women like women doting. Mm. That's why they have all the bridesmaids. Yeah. And they have to put. What do you, who do you think? Why do you think they invented the train on a gown? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, hey, I'm going to go this way. Hey, bitches, get behind me and hold my <laughs> shit. You know what I mean? You don't have the best man cupping your nuts when you're walking down the aisle. Yeah. That's essentially what it is. Yeah. I mean, we will we'll do tails, but they don't drag on the floor. Right. We, we only do it with pallbearers. We do it after we're gone. Th- that's right. That's right. We wait till we die, <laughs> yeah. and then we enlist the pallbearers. I have so many dude. thoughts about so but many. Th- <laughs> women love other women waiting yeah. on them. Again, mm. it again, the manny petty, especially the petty. Like it, it's nice once in a while, and I, I yeah, get it. But it feels it. it's. I'm gonna take a woman, and I'm gonna tell her, get down and wash my feet, bitch. Mm. Carry my train. Yeah. 
I'm going to pick a crazy color and you guys all have to wear a bridesmaids. I don't care how fat you look. Yeah, there are a lot of rituals. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of everybody. I fucking love, women love telling other women what to do. Interesting. And guys, generally we go, oh, leave me. you You would never get a shoe shine in an airport with an old black guy. No. but That's the, his business. But nobody wears shoes anymore. Everyone wears sneakers. Van it's slip the ons. worst it's the dumbest business model. Yes. It would be like if somebody in the airport was there, like, repairing umbrellas. Right, right, yeah. It's like, what are you doing here? I want to look yeah. at him and go, what do you... I feel like it's like... It's almost like that person is time transported yeah. from, from, like, 70 years ago. I think they... I, I feel like they kind of like the fact that there's not a lot of business rolling through. But don't they get per shoe? I guess they do. I don't know if they make some minimum Condition. wage but it's got or something. They must sit there just watching all the sea of sneakers walking by. And then, God Candace forbid, everyone. somebody if, with shoes walks by. There must be like, you got to be shitting me. What if, the <laughs> one person that could get yeah. a shine? What hey, if, how about some solidarity yeah, over right. here? Uh, everyone's, everyone's rocking the Skechers. And it's not working. The old and people now. Everyone slip on. You're right. There's no business. They may as, may as well be in saddle repair. Mm-hmm. There's no business. What if they started doing the pedicures? Yeah, those chairs could, would be great. What though. if we could kick off our our sketchers and have? But then, how would you feel about the old black guy? That's what I'm saying. Do you think pedicures would go down if it was old black guys doing the pedicures and the white women didn't like the optics mm. of it yeah you know and sometimes they wear an outfit they, they yeah they, that i don't uh, makes me uncomfortable the shoe shine, shoe guy? shine outfit blue smock thing i don't yeah. know what it is I, I just you don't, don't need an outfit to I, shine yeah, shoes. yeah 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 you don't uh i don't like it here's uh, here's a thought i had and you don't need uh volleyball shoes i have a new theory okay. mm-hmm. what are volleyball shoes you got to have kids. We have kids. They play volleyball, and then you got to buy them volleyball shoes. Oh, they need specific. Yeah, they can't gear. just like they can't wear what tennis shoes. Tennis shoes, God, which they, are made for a basketball court. Yeah, no, they love spending their money. Yes. your money, absolutely. Right. Mm. I have a new theory. I could be wrong. I'm testing it out right mm. now for the first time. Mm. I think. For the people, I don't know if you're at this point in your life where you have a shower that you have to squeegee. You have to reach I do. a certain... You, you do? I do, yeah. Wow! I, means you're I gay. can't believe it either. I can't believe it. It's a gay thing. I think <laughs> you have them. I do, but I don't squeegee because I'm not gay. Oh! It's a gay thing. Okay. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so what happens? Does mold build up? Uh, no, I, it's not an issue. Okay. Did you spray it with something? I don't. I don't touch it. But, Orny, maybe you can explain this, because you're a guy who would have thoughts on uh-huh. this. I would think you would like the squeegee, because it's sort of like an extension of an automobile. I'd like to, but I'm not gay. It's a gay thing. Okay. Yeah. Can I finish my theory yes, first? and then you can... I'm convinced. Chris, I'm going to talk to you, because okay. you're gay, oh, uh-huh. and you squeegee. I do. Okay. I think all men squeegee up and down, and women do this, like, squeegee sash. Oh, side to side. Uh, they do a lot the of horizontal. Si- the horizontal all the way down. Gives me. When I watch a woman do this. Gives me a panic attack. Mm. Seems like a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. Lot, could be a shoulder injury. Mm. A lot of joint movement. A lot of right, Are, left. I go up and down. Up and down. How about do. your wife? Top to bottom. Um, I think I actually don't know. I don't know what she does. I, I could see her doing going horizontal. You've sure. never watched her. I've never watched her. Oh, squeak. really? I supervise. I, know. I supervise <laughs> because I don't want. Sometimes there's like a little some dots. Mm-hmm. I do it, and then I take a chamois, and I do extra cleanup you afterwards. buff it out. Buff it, I do it right. You'd be nice. a good shine guy at an airport. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'd love that job. <laughs> it sweet it job. might come to that. <laughs> <laughs> Who travels less at the airport, within the airport people? <laughs> shine guy. Shine, shine guy. guy. Shine guy's shine never guy. been on an airplane. Right? Shine guy can't even afford the parking at the end of the day. He's been on, like, more paddle boats than actual aircraft. I, but his... Next time I'm going to go up to one of them and go, seriously, what, what are you still doing here? Yeah, what are we doing Why? here? There's other there's other things you could be doing. Yeah, agreed. Orny, I, I got to know where you come down on this. I'm, I'm, I'm ready. And I swear to God, it's true. I got I got a I got a shower with the with the glass. Yeah. I got the handheld sprayer. Yeah. The handheld sprayer goes on a hook about shoulder height, head height, and the maid 
who who comes. I don't schedule the maid, but the maid just shows up every two Weekly, weeks. Every two weeks. Every two weeks. Well, I don't need a maid, don't want a maid, but I get a maid. Yeah. And it's every two weeks. Okay. And then she always finishes the shower by taking the handheld and like spraying, you know, w- w- washing the stuff down. Yeah. With the handheld. Okay. Makes sense. Because you couldn't get to it with the shower head. Okay. Then she puts the thing back on the holder, which is head height. Yeah. Oh, no. And then she positions it. Yep, yep. Facing right the, at the fucking door. Yep. The right at the yep. opening. Yep. Right at the opening. Yep. And then I. That's on purpose. Who do not live there. I do yep. not live there full That's time. I have no idea that the maid's been there. I have no idea. Then I go in and the button that diverts the water to the hand sprayer, yeah, the always diverter. pushed in. The diverter, yeah. always pushed in. Then I go in to take a shower, and I do the move I always do. Open the door, lean in to get the hot water cranked up, and as I crank it, I get blasted in the face. <laughs> right. Not in the chest, mm-hmm. in the face. How do you like that? Because this thing is positioned Exactly in my face. Right. I I took a video There's of video it. Chris somewhere. has it somewhere. I said I, I'm just going to walk up. I know nothing. I'm just going to turn this thing on and see what happens. It's on purpose. Right in the fucking it's face. It's on purpose. It's like, on purpose. Because look, at, if they're if they're cleaning a counter and there's three items there, right? It's very easy to replace them like that. There's always you come back and it's sort of like it doesn't even look close. Yes. To you, and that's on. That's got to be on purpose. Yeah. I filmed it. Okay, let's see. And it's always no... ice cold water. If it's yes. warm water, dude, maybe that it's looks like fun. no. If it's warm water, it's still in the <laughs> face and outside. <laughs> yeah. like? It looks like a, a middle ma- middle aged man uncomfortable taking a selfie. I don't film myself. <laughs> it looks like you're trying to seduce, you know, <laughs> an <laughs> underage boy. This yeah. is genuine. <laughs> well, if, if they are, so be it. <laughs> nice robe. <laughs> Sorry, I enjoy my robe. Yeah, look at this. Okay, okay. My maid came today. She likes to play a little trick on me. Everyone thinks I'm nuts. But she cleans the shower out with the hand sprayer. And let's see if she did what she normally does to me. Oh, the tub's in the shower. Before I take a shower, I like to heat up the water. So I like to lean in, turn it on, heat it up, and then get into the shower. So let's see how this works. Why are you out of breath? I don't know. I'm excited. <laughs> this is. Oh, oh, phone got hit too. I just got blasted. I got blasted directly in the face. That? <laughs> That's how she leaves the shower. Head height. You see this? And try it again. I'd like to see just a close-up of the shower head. There, see, it, there is. it is. Upper, it's behind. That's right, and yeah. it's it's positioned perfectly for the opening of yeah. the door. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would have edited and cut it to that. Uh, yeah, of the first I don't tape. know how to. I don't know how to edit. The well, point is, is I got blasted in the face. Yeah. yeah, and that's how she leaves it every single time. Yeah, you're saying that's intentional. Absolutely. Absolutely. They know. They, they know. know. They know for sure. Yes. They you must not be tipping enough at holiday time. I guess I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Have you said something to her? No. I'm never there when she's there. I don't speak any uh, Lebanese. Oh, Lebanese? No, she's Spanish. Yeah. This is All an right. attack. Let's take a break. We got Why? some news. We got news. Where, is the show over already? No, no. We got news. We'll do that right after this. Morgan and Morgan, it's 2024. Let's talk about something important. If you get hurt this year and you're injured, well, your injury could be worth millions of dollars. And if you're ever injured, you should check out my friends at Morgan and Morgan, America's largest injury law firm, over 100 offices nationwide and more than 1,000 lawyers, more than $20 billion with a B, $20 billion recovered for over 500,000 clients over the years. Morgan & Morgan has a proven track record of fighting to get you the full and fair compensation you deserve. They've been fighting for the people for over 35 years. Racing my vintage cars, well, that can be a little bit hard. Oh, yeah. But submitting an injury claim with Morgan & Morgan is easy. Am I right, Dawson? 
If you're ever injured, you can check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless they win. For more information, go to ForThePeople.com slash Adam or dial pound law, pound 529 from your cell phone. That's F-O-R, thepeople.com slash Adam or pound law, pound 529 from your cell. This is a paid advertisement. I love eating goldfish. You know what goes good with goldfish? Chocolate. Mix them, mix them. I love chocolate so much on Halloween. I bought all this chocolate. Then I didn't answer the door. Every time I heard a knock, keep moving, fatty. I'm not gonna enable you. Keep moving, go to another house. I'm gonna turn into one of those old people handing out raisins. Raisins and pretzels. Orny Adams is on the Adam Carolla Doing show. Doing the Halloween oh, bit. Was I that me? Orny. I hope that was right on Halloween day. <laughs> wow. Yes, we need a timestamp. Wow. I um, I thought of you the other day because I do think about your Halloween bit often. <laughs> That's <laughs> all I do. Yeah, as we get round. closer to Halloween, you start sort of teasing it now. Well, I set up. I go like, Halloween, you know, scant nine months from now. Let yeah. me tell you what I think, and then I get into it. Or you, know? you could do like sort of like, oh, I saw a weird video van in my neighborhood kind of reminds me of Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, you could bring mm-hmm. it in, but I I I nailed some incredible solar eclipse material. Oh. And perfect. I now have to wait 20 years. Oh my god, yeah. To do this again. Yeah. I don't I don't know any other event mm. that they're asking everybody to participate in and if you do it wrong, you could go blind. Yeah. Yeah, I and I'm always, un, uh, I, I'm always unclear why you go blind, because if the sun is being blotted out by the moon, then why are you going blind? But it's, it's the outer fringe. I never ask. No one ever asked. They just go, don't do it. Don't do it. And it was such nothing here. I know. It was a zero burger. Yeah. I'll, also, I just, uh, I mean, I, I don't know why we're animated by what I would consider next to nothing. Right. All right. It gets dark every day. I get it. Yeah. What do we got in the news? All right. Well, Ornithal James Simpson. Orny. Yeah. What happened? Uh, Isn't Orny short for Ornithal? No. Could no. be. What are you doing? Is I'm that what cleaning smells? cleaning my glasses. Your yeah. feet are off? What's going on? I'm spraying some on my glasses to clean them. Oh. Sorry. Go ahead. OJ Simpson, he has died at the age of 76. His family shared the news on social media on Thursday, saying he passed away the day before. They write... On April 10th, our father, Ornithal James Simpson, succumbed to his battle with cancer. He was surrounded by his children and grandchildren. During this time of transition, his family asks that you please respect their wishes for privacy and grace. Mm. Very interesting American character, like if you think about it. You know, he, he grew up in a housing project. Like he was, you know, he grew up sort of rough and tumble streets of, but he was in San Francisco. So people don't really give it the, you know, it's not Chicago and it's not Detroit. You don't think of like the, yeah, you don't think of that, but that's how he, he grew up and he was such a crazy gifted athlete and like, like, and killer quietly good at that. uh, Quietly. Like one of the best looking guys ever like just a great looking guy also had this really smooth tone when he spoke you know but but <laughs> so he became this icon but no what i'm what i'm saying is is he grew up all of, here's what i'm saying if your look is right and your tone is right you can have a completely dark heart but we all see you as oh this guy mm-hmm. You know what I mean? He became this huge, he was really like the first black guy that was completely embraced by corporate America. Mm. Like everyone loved OJ. He was doing, he was endorsing everything. Movies. Naked guns. Making movies. Like he was the first like like palatable Mm. black guy for America where you really just went, we'll take him. You know, like, like Jim Brown was a great back and a great athlete and a great NFL player, but he was like too militant and too angry and too, we, we didn't embrace, Hertz rent a car, didn't want to do business with Jim Brown. Okay. He, OJ, was like nice looking, soft spoken, smooth, you know, ran in those circles. Like he was this guy and would have made 
you know, a if you would have done a poll in 1979 or 1980, he would have made a very short list of lovable Americans or most looked up to Americans. Yeah. Hmm. It's crazy. High right? approval rating. Very in his high. Prime. Very high approval rating. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. So it was uh, reportedly diagnosed with prostate cancer in February and uh, has been undergoing treatment. All right. Well, I guess the treatment didn't work as well oh. as anticipated. I could, yeah. I think All that's right. fair to say. So, um, what do we do with him? Do we just go, he's a killer and he should be shunned? Or do we look at any accomplishments that he did? What do, what do we do? Is, is everything null and void because of the killing? In my mind, yes. And then who is going to find the killer now that he can no longer search? He will from uh, the afterlife oh. send signals. <sighs> uh huh. Do you think we should call Cato Kalin? I actually have his number. It's one of the few famous people whose number I have in my phone. <laughs> Cato is a fan of my stand-up. Yeah. And he lives in my Shasta trailer. Oh, uh, really? And, yeah. I love, uh, yeah, Cato's cool dude. He's been on a few times. He was obviously famously in the back house yeah. with, uh, with OJ back in the day. Yeah. Well, this was, you know, this is basically, they knew he was guilty. They interviewed uh, this old black juror female, and she was like, yeah, it was payback time. Mm. Then enough white guys got off, now we're going to let a black guy off. Insane. And that was kind of, that's where we're at. Yeah. But that's I mean, what happened. He couldn't, he knew he was getting close to death, not even like a, a confession, a letter. Uh, he wrote a book called, out. I think I did it, or <laughs> if I did it, or when I did it. You know what I like? <laughs> something. The guy knows, he admitted to it. My favorite memory of OJ, and this is why uh, Christopher Darden and Marsha Clark are, ugh. The, the whole thing is we're going to get him to try on a glove, right? We're going to get him to try on a glove. Now, anyone who's, had a set of isotoners or just leather gloves, like dress gloves, knows it's a little bit of a battle to get them on just kind of yeah. in general. It's really the cowboy boot of hand coverings. You know, like there's a, there's some work. It's not a sketcher or flip-flop <laughs> move. You know, you got to work it a little bit. Like uh, when I race cars and I put on my racing gloves, it's it's a little, it takes a minute to get all the fingers in the right holes. Now, if you took that glove and you soaked it in blood and then just let it air dry yeah. and said, try this on, and then you said, put a latex glove on first so you get some extra uh, resistance, you know, friction, <laughs> and then you told me, struggle with it. Yeah. I'd be down on the ground on my back using my feet. Like, that. I'd just be going, I can't. Use your teeth. Him yeah. putting that glove on. Looks like those infomercials where they take the spaghetti colander and the boiling pot and they make it into one. Mm. And they show the woman trying to take the pot of spaghetti at the beginning in black and white. Yeah. She goes, oh, you've tried to make spaghetti. And she dumps it yeah, all over yeah. the kid. Slides you know, like, oh, you've, oh, no. oh, you've tried to cut zucchini before and it just goes flying out the uh. window. That's what he was doing. He was like... They gave him a shrunken miniature <laughs> glove. They put a second glove on that creates a lot of friction. And then his whole team went, the more you can struggle with putting this fucking thing on. And by the way, don't take your arthritis medicine for two <laughs> days and your hand is yeah. going to fucking swell yeah. up. Mm. And then so he's like, a lot before. of salt. <laughs> yeah, sodium. The, the mother, what was the prosecution doing? Why, like I, I would say, no, it's not. Would we have to try on the glove? What size is the glove? It's an extra large. Okay, what size are you, OJ? Extra large. I, we don't need yeah. to soak this thing in blood, shrink it, put on uh, a vinyl glove, a surgical glove, and then watch this guy who's an acclaimed actor. Not and, a great one. An acclaimed actor. <laughs> not a great struggle. one. Struggle. If it doesn't Struggled, fit, and and then and then I'll come up with a catchphrase saying, "If it doesn't fit, you must acquit." Is it and or like, don't fit? Is it, it if it don't fit, you must acquit? If I think if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. But who knew this would work out this way? Everybody, and I don't know why they ever let him do it. I, why is I, the price it's, tag it's, still it's, on? It's it's, it's <laughs> mini pearl. <laughs> Look, he's like, all right. I, I can't. Not, oh. I can. My hands are swollen. Uh, 
I'm wearing latex gloves. For the, this was the end of the trial. Do you know moment. how hard it would be to just put an old glove on with latex gloves on? Just in general? Friction. Yeah, Major I would have just friction. I would have just went, uh, no, we're not gonna we're what, not gonna do it. They should have given them a brand new pair of those gloves at, with and see if it could go on too. Right. All right. So what is this? It's an isotoner. All right, what is it? It's the uh, Lamar Driving Series. What size is it? It's an XL. All right, go buy me a new pair of Lamar Driving Series right, isotoners and put it on, and we don't, need an un- we don't need a second glove. You won't contaminate it. <laughs> he is doing both. Judge Ito. Remember Ito? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Judge Ito. He loved- Chris, you could play Ito in the movie. He could. I'm, I'm he, loved- he, lo- he, loved- right. he loved hourglasses. Ito did. What do you mean? Oh, that was he collected thing? them. Oh yeah, on every on his desk. You guys don't know this? No. Oh, what do you show mean? Ito's desk. Oh, don't give me You don't the... know this? <laughs> no, I'm oh. sorry. Yeah, I, got no, I don't know the, the specifics of Judge Ito's life. <laughs> Can I say this? <laughs> you have one guy who should know from the age appropriate standpoint, uh, and another guy who's his doppelganger <laughs> who should know because he goes for him every year for Halloween. Yeah. Remember that bit we do? <laughs> Every year he goes. This is why nobody yeah. gets it when I dress up like him. I you don't even have to dress up. Around. You could just, uh, you know, go out. He had his in, <laughs> his entire bench was filled with hourglasses. Oh, do we have a picture of this? That, that yeah. was his. Let that was see. his thing. He collected hour. I don't know why. Thank God it wasn't butt plugs. Mm. But I don't know why he had to put that on display. I don't know. Why you know why? Because I don't want quirky judges. He was into That's attention. Oh, like when he's like, I love my little pony, and now I'm going to decide <laughs> this murder trial? Like, I'm not putting my shit out there. And by the way, that's government issue. That's mm. not your territory. Yeah. You sit on it. Right. But that's not, you don't own it. Does he, is, when he leaves at the end of the day, does he have to take all that stuff down? Does he have to strike the set? Yeah, because traffic court moves in right. after noon. Night court. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they're, oh, what? Are, oh. oh, they're like bunts and burners. They're hourglasses. So maybe that's how he timed. Is, that the, is this the the TV show? I, I can tell you, Chris, you look more like him than I ever realized. What do you mean yeah. the TV yeah, show? Yeah, that's the actor. The people versus This is, a, this is oh. a TV show. This is an oh, actual show. Oh, oh, that's who you look like the actor. But, but look, the TV show has to dress the set like Ito, right? I, yeah. 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 So they put all the time. But you can find a picture of actual Edo, not the TV show, but that's what they did. There's did you no- ever see the TV show? It's called The People vs. O.J. Simpson, and yeah. they get heavily into the whole glove thing. Uh, it's, it's fascinating. But, yeah. You know, Marsha did said, no, no, no. Darden wanted it, and then I think it was like F. F. Lee Bailey who tried the glove on. It was like, oh, fuck, these are real small. Let's get them to make them they Let's let F. Lee Bailey it. fuck around with those gloves, huh? They, they, they actually might not have been F. Lee. It might have been an, a, a, another character or a person. Yeah, I'm just surprised they let anyone but, yeah, mess they let, with the they evidence. They let anyone walk up. The, the lawyers, the court is at recess. And he goes up and just picks up picks up these gloves and, oh, try them on. <laughs> Look at that. How, how is that allowed with evidence? I, I don't know, but uh, there's a not great shot of Ito with all his. Uh, oh, that's Chris. I'm sorry if Chris did his hair like that and put oh, those, yeah. the big pussy glasses <laughs> on. The glasses, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. I I'm going to go out on a limb and say that if this was being tried today, find a better shot of Ito in his timepieces. It's going to make me DNA mad. evidence would convict OJ Simpson. Yeah. There's no way they they could pull his DNA evidence out of those gloves. They mm-hmm. could pull it uh, mixed blood DNA off mm-hmm. of the crime scene. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know. Yeah. I always laugh because I need, you know, there he is. He's got his time. He's got this probably it, looks one. Like, it looks very steampunky, but you yeah. should probably be able to put, bring your own knickknacks to the, to the courtroom. And, like, it's not your, your cubicle desk. You should be able to decorate it with yeah. whatever you want. Find one from the front. You'll find a good Adam one. Adam would just front. have his I, eyeglass cleaner. I, I, <laughs> I'm rag. just saying, I I agree with me. I don't want you in your little uh, idiosyncratic whatever's up there and your little piccadillies. You yeah. know what I mean? This right. is a this is a role. I don't want people distracted. Mm-hmm. No personality allowed. I, although I like the idea. Like, I'm going to start traveling with this 
hourglass because every time I order something, yeah. I'm just going to a restaurant and go, uh, I'll have a dry gin martini, and then I'll just flip it and smack mm. it right down, put right in the middle of the table and lean back. That's going to get you better service. I think it puts everyone yeah. on the clock. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Maybe I get some of that sand from your bed and make myself. <laughs> 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 you got, did you bring any with Some like Michigan sand? Yeah. I got to be honest with you. I still don't know at this point if it's paladrone or paladrome. I oh, now, now I've said it too many times. Yeah, it's it's lost. Yeah, Palindrome. I think it's gonna, I think it's going to be a great bit that I'll put together. I'm going to do a video. Of do this. we correct people? Like I'll be around people and they go, "You better nip it in the butt," <laughs> and I'll be like, "Do I stop and yes. burn calories, or yes. do I just let, let them go. keep rolling with yes. this? Let it go." I'm, Let it go. I, I'm grateful that Chris corrected me because if you didn't, then I would go make this video that I'm planning to make after this, <laughs> and I would embarrass myself further. Ah. Uh. So I like being corrected, and I, I I believe in shaming, and I think we need to bring it back. I agree. I think we need to bring it back. I shamed somebody on stage last night. Really I'm proud of it. What'd yeah. you do? Her voice was really annoying, and she just <laughs> in the audience. Yeah, she was yelling out, and it. Oh, and okay. I, yeah. She was uh-huh. on her first. She was on her phone. Mm. There was a lot of problems last night at the Laugh Factory. I'll say that. Yeah. Uh, first, if you've ever seen me live, and it wasn't a big crowd. It wasn't my show. I was just doing a set, so I'm not responsible. But I do this thing where a lot of the times I don't, I'm not even near the microphone. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so and I've seen it. Right. The whole front row, this is how there was only like 50 people there. The whole front row was empty all the way around the stage. And mm-hmm. I got up there and I said, well, you know, where are these people? What's going on? And I'm nowhere near the microphone, so I'm just off. And a guy in the back yelled, Doug, speak into the mic. Oh, wow. And I said, you don't tell me how to do my job. And he goes, <laughs> I can't hear you. Oh, well, that's good. And I said, well, then why don't you sit in the front row? Right. Mm-hmm. Big applause. Big applause. Then the guy kept going, kept mm-hmm. yelling. And I, I said, I'm not using the mic the whole show. And I put the mic all the way down. <laughs> you showed him. And I did it acapella go. <laughs> However you say that word. That's good. That's I did good. it a palindrome style. Mm-hmm. And uh, the guy kept yelling out. And then I said, at what point? Does the Australian guy who's out front, the bouncer, come in and mm. say something to this guy? Mm. At what point that guy loves to punch people? Let's let's go. And afterwards, the manager came up to me and said, uh, "We should have a signal for when you want somebody thrown out." I said, "Me yelling? At what point does the Australian guy come in?" Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But and I love that club, the Laugh Factory. I've never had a problem there. That was no. very rare. So I, yeah. I understand why. The guy wasn't thrown out and how they could be confused. Mm. But, uh, you know, I shamed him and I shamed her. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. I, I, love, I love shame. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. It, I mean, we'd all be picking our noses, right? Yeah. Do you know what I realized the other day? That um, when you open your phone, you know, the face recognition, if you're picking your nose, it will not open. Oh, then I can't use my phone. Yeah. That's I got to do all digits. <laughs> I don't think my car will work if I'm not picking my nose. Really? I know it sounds weird and superstitious, but and I don't want to try. Yeah. I don't want to chance it. Yeah. <laughs> but when I hear the seatbelt ding, 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 that's just a reminder for me to put it's my finger right. on my nose. Yeah. yeah. I'm th- also thinking of doing an unironic uh, recreation of your shower video mm, at my house. Please. Yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking of doing uh, an eight-minute video much like yours. <laughs> it felt like eight. It was 45 seconds. Okay. Yeah. All right. Do we have do we have Edo and his timepieces, or well, we couldn't do any we couldn't do any better than uh, what we got. That's all right. Anyway, yeah. hourglasses, Edo, everywhere. Chris Edo, you should have known. I should have known. Shots I, are from the side. Um, was it? Hmm? All shots are from the side. Because they don't allow cameras in the courtroom. Oh, with our okay. Cameras, so I all imagine right. that it's going to be mm-hmm. hard to find shots. But uh, Caitlyn Jenner tweeted mm. out about. Oh. Uh, yeah, we have, we have it here. Oh, oh have, because of the, whole, the whole Kardashian thing. Right, yeah. yeah. So we have, we, celebrities have been tweeting out about, mm-hmm. about OJ. That's so Byron could throw it up. Caitlin had what to say about uh, OJ? Well, she just wrote, well, we got it Good some. riddance. Hashtag OJ Simpson. <laughs> Is there anybody we... Uh, there's not many people we have no grace for. And we we couldn't say you know you have to you have to try to salvage something for but o, OJ I think universally accepted right we can say whatever we want yes about him yes mm-hmm. is there any question in this room uh, about his guilt or innocence no but 
Is there going to be some pot stir, some comedian troublemaker that's going to do? Okay, so there, here's the series that's coming, right? Mm-hmm. There's, uh, you know, the people who tweet every year during the Super Bowl and pretend like they don't know what's going on. Yeah, I, I don't, but yeah. It's a thing. Oh, okay. They're like, Evidently, there's some sort of thing going on oh, today. I and, you know, ugh, uh-huh. check off the, <laughs> the low hanging, stupid comedy fruit. Yeah. You know? Oh, did it get dark in the middle of the day today? Hashtag yeah, yeah, solar right. eclipse. There's going to be some tweets like, uh, oh, uh, guy set the single season rushing record, haven't kept track of him since. It's a shame or something or what's, ever, what's all the f- yeah. hate or something. There's going to be the don't know it tweets, mm. right? Didn't. Didn't know he killed somebody tweets, Uh, joke tweets. uh, And then there's going to be the real pot stirs, like he was a hero (laughs) and, you know, this is the day that um, chivalry died or something like that. There's going to be those people out there too, right? Brad Williams had a viral tweet. Stir it up. Oh, what'd he say? Finally, OJ can rest knowing his wife's killer is dead. Oh, yeah. Yeah, There you go. That's good. The Caitlyn Jenner one. Which said good riddance, hashtag OJ Simpson. Had she she just I, written good riddance? I that yeah, would be yeah. more powerful. I know. <laughs> like, we know what you're hashtag. talking about. Yeah. Uh yeah, I talked to Brad Williams about OJ and he said uh he met him once and he did not trust the smell of his balls. <laughs> Oh, wow. Yeah. Big tell. Yeah, and I was like, you know, you little people, you know, you have instincts like cats, you know. <laughs> and you could tell a lot of man about a man right. by his musk. How know? did you, the genius <laughs> that you could pull Brad Williams into an OJ. Adam has a ton mo- of Brad Williams jokes. Like, he used them in a set. It's. <laughs> I didn't know he was going to bring up Brad Williams. <laughs> it's just that uh, he brought it up and it made me. Wow. You know, Mm-hmm. Wow. All right. Orny, I feel like there's nothing more to be said with you. Really? We're going to end on a, a Caitlyn Jenner tweet? <laughs> All right. One more. We'll Come do on. One more. Give me something fun. Something, something fun. fun. I brought the sailors with the SOS. Yeah, yeah. You were writing right. during yeah. the whole bit. No, no. I, I was going to pull clips from this show to put it in my viral video. No, I, nope. I love, no, just I, I, I like your take on the SOS versus the help. I, uh, I, I agree. And I guarantee, I'll put it up there and I guarantee, and I'll say the palindrome should be a palindrome. That word should be, uh, you know, uh-huh. and someone will say, oh, you know, so-and-so did that bit. Oh, yeah. It, it, I'm, I'm sure it's completely unoriginal, but yeah. I'm still going to do it. Yeah. Um, a Vietnamese billionaire has been sentenced to death for $44 billion fraud scheme. Mm. Right? So this is a real estate tycoon, Truong Mai Lan, sentenced to death on Thursday in southern Vietnam in the country's largest financial fraud case ever. Mm. Uh, nearly 3% of the country's 2022 GDP. Wow. She's able to, she's able to grab. And, uh, That's a female? Yeah. You oh, could play wow. her, too. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. What's she into? That's right. Um, her niece uh, also sentenced to 17 years in prison for aiding her aunt. And according to prosecutor, prosecutors, over a period of three years from 2019, uh, starting in 2019, she ordered her driver to withdraw 108 trillion Vietnamese dong, which is over $4 billion in cash mm-hmm. from the bank, and store it in her basement. Mm-hmm. Well, what's wrong with Vietnam that this is a system that could be played this way? I mean, you, you got to find a mirror, Vietnam. You have to. We're well, blaming some soul the country searching. for this woman's fraud. I am because if you said, "Oh, this guy, he just pulled his Hertz, uh, his his U-Haul truck, and he pulled it up to Fort Knox, and he told the driver to go get <laughs> a billion pallets of gold bullion, and then put it back. He drove back to Encino and threw it in the basement of his Encino townhome. You'd go, well, what the fuck is wrong with the country? Mm. You wouldn't be Why questioning yeah. him. You'd be questioning the governing bodies, the rules. So if you leave your house unlocked, you deserve to be robbed. I'm saying, un- first off, there has to be corruption at a high level for you to pull this off. It can't just be you and your driver. You can't just command your driver go into the bank 
of Ho Chi Minh and go withdraw a bunch of a bunch of dung yeah. or whatever we're calling yeah. it. And there's got to be somebody who works at the bank, government officials, yeah. you know, mayors and mm. congressmen or whatever yeah. you have. People got to be on the table. So more people need to be executed. Yes. Okay. Right. That's, but does the punishment that, warrant the crime? Well, listen, I don't. What what I don't get, like, I was yelling this to Doctor Drew. Uh, the United States, uh, 150 years ago, outlawed debtors' prison. So no longer could you go to prison for owing a debt mm. unless you owe the government money in your Wesley Snipes. Then you go to prison. You know what I mean? So this is a concept where the government goes. Look, if, if Dawson rented my warehouse and he owed me 50 grand and he never paid me, he cannot pay me. There's no prison for him. That's not right. But you owe the IRS money. You will go to prison. Right. So what the fuck is it, government? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it allowable? The idea is if we owe you money, then it's fun. It's fair. You go to prison. But you owe a landlord money, then there is no prison. Mm. Jeez, that seems really convenient. I wonder how the who's making these rules. The guys get is the landlord making these rules. Same people inventing language. That's right. Are doing are doing this. So I know I don't think you should be killed for uh, owing money. Right. You have to kill somebody. It's a hell of a to, deterrent to be killed or bring more than two dogs on an airplane. I think you should be killed for that Brad Williams joke. <laughs> <laughs> It's not a joke. He told me he didn't trust There's no story. way he told you that. He didn't like the smell of his balls. He told me. Okay. <laughs> I made a joke. <laughs> oh. All right. Speaking of butts of jokes, he didn't like the backside smell oh, either. Oh, yeah. Boy. Mm -hmm. Which way he was facing yeah. it. Did you hear that thing about California um, spent $24 billion on homeless programs and then According to a state audit, it revealed that uh, they hadn't been tracking how well it's been doing. Oh, what a shocker! So, yeah. yeah, so everyone's really upset that all that money's just gone, and we don't even know how if it worked. It's so not a lot of money it. though. Twenty-four million. I hate to Billion. say it. Billion. Okay, Billion. now I'm angry. <laughs> now I got a problem uh -oh. with this. Yeah, I'm fired up. Where's that money? In yeah. my basement. Twenty-four billion. Oh, yeah. I would love. Oh, I'd buy every. Oh, we could have a second. Deck on the 405. Ooh. Oh. We could have a monorail going from every major city right to LAX. I mean, you think what you could do with $24 billion. How does that go missing? There's no it's a paper it's an, trail? It's, 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 it's a whole fucking complex, this homeless expert and advocates and ever, and it just all goes out the fucking window. Yeah. It's ben, such they a don't, ruse. They don't measure the effectiveness of using this money. They yes. haven't. I'm you right. know... Uh, this is what I've come to realize. Do you want to wrap it up? Because I'll just shut I do, up. Because Jennifer Murphy's here. Who? She went viral. She's a viral sensation. Do you want to watch some of the video? We could show We'll show it. you the, the 30 seconds of the of, of Are we the, doing two guests on this show? Yeah. I'm not enough? Some say too much. <laughs> <laughs> I love those comments. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, we, we, we've gone over our allotted time. Yes. There's no more sand left in the hourglass. Yes. On the bed. Yeah. It's all. Well, you're bed. wasting a lot of time doing that Brad Williams joke. <laughs> oh, wow. oh, are you kidding? That's the jewel in the crown of this episode. How dare you, Horny? You're just jealous. You wish you had a smelly ball short guy joke like I do. Oh, oh my God, Brad's here. Oh, no. Oh, Arnie's doing Too soon? <laughs> all right. Uh, Oh, we have the, uh, they're they're saying we have the teaser, not the trailer. I don't know. Don't just you pull, have this stupid video that we probably, someone told out. you to, or someone probably showed you to do, or primed you to do? We have a guest that went viral. That's the next. Uh, yes, we have a viral you, guest. Here, I'll, I'll send you the link, All right. Byron. Shouldn't Byron have that? And I'm talking. And you're I'm looking. For, you're looking for a Murphy what? bed? You know my life. Terrazzo, number one. <laughs> Murphy beds, number two. Hourglass is number three. <laughs> Brad Williams <laughs> sack jokes four five and six. That's the way I go through what, life. What did I just watch? <laughs> that's the question. Yeah. That's a that's well. That's what we're going to get into with Jennifer Murphy. Oh okay. Wow. Oh, wait a minute. Murphy and Murphy bed. 
Oh, oh, it's meant to be. I didn't even do that. Orny, let me give you some uh, plugs over here. It's going to be in Vegas at Kimmel's Comedy Club April 18th, and then Kookaburra Lounge, which is really cool, doing Netflix as a joke festival. May 4th, podcast What's Wrong with Orny Adams, and also live dates. Visit ornyadams.com. Orny, always great. Thank you. Thank right. you, guys. Quick break, right back. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts, O'Reilly Auto Parts. They're in the business of keeping your car on the road. They offer friendly, helpful service and the parts, knowledge, and everything else you need to maintain and repair your vehicle. They've got thousands of parts and accessories in stock, either in store or online. You never have to worry if you're in a jam. They got your part. The team at O'Reilly Auto Parts can test your battery for free in or out of your car. It's nice not to have to yank that thing. If it needs to be replaced, they'll help you find the right battery for your vehicle. Need your windshield wipers replaced, brake light fixed, or quick service? They'll help you find the right parts or point you in the nearest local uh, repair shop so uh, you can have the pros do it. Whether you're a car aficionado or an auto novice, you'll find the employees at O'Reilly Auto Parts are knowledgeable, helpful, and all friendly. The professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts are your one-stop shop for all things auto, do it yourself. And you can find out what you need in store or online. Stop by O'Reilly Auto Parts today, or you can give them a visit O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. That's O'ReillyAuto.com slash Adam. Former Miss Oregon USA and uh, <clears throat> Miss USA finalists, I should say. I'm reading down here. Jennifer Murphy, good to see you. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, the viral, the controversial <laughs> song, which is, isn't controversial to me, but uh, I don't know. Everyone has to get their panties in a bunch. I don't get it. I like to push the envelope a little bit in life. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to make it fun and, and take risks. You can't always please everyone. So I don't try. I just try and be me. Yeah, my impulse is if you think of something and you think it's funny, then you're kind of compelled to say it. Not really vet it. Not really figure it out. Not think about what somebody may think about it. If you're doing comedy and you're doing content and something's funny then I just think you should say it. Yeah, if you spent so much time, you know, analyzing everything you did in life, you wouldn't have time to live life. And sometimes we mess up, and that's okay. If we tried to be perfect, it would be no fun. <laughs> also, we're living in a bizarre time when there's sort of simultaneously insane, savage atrocities you know, there's Hamas rolling into the music festival over there in Israel and like, oh, we're not just going to kill people. We're going to like rape them and put grenades in their genitalia and stuff like just bizarre sort of unthinkable atrocities. We're also like <clears throat> there's now a form of crime where you just walk down the streets of Manhattan and people punch you in the face if you're elderly or Asian or something, you know. Or we might just push you onto the subway track. So it's like that, and we're super worried about pronouns, like at <laughs> right. the same time. We're, we're simultaneously in a lawless, bizarre, spiraling the drain of humanity and life Whatever's going on in Ukraine, whatever's going on in Gaza, you know, it is a complete and utter like famine and atrocities. And we're worried about misgendering people at the same time. It's ridiculous. And my thing is all the people that are worried about all the word related stuff should fuck right off. This has not, you, you guys, there's much bigger fry. All you queers for Palestine, go down to Palestine and see what you can do or shut the fuck up. Thank you. Well said, Adam. And, you know, it's kind of crazy how much I've been attacked. Now, the haters made me famous, so I call them my helpful haters. Yes. But it was not fun when it first happened. It was not pretty. I lost all of my, my ways to make money. I lost my finances. They freaking canceled me and called me the worst things when my heart was in it for the right reasons. Was it? <laughs> all right. So you can say ninja. Uh, 
Beverly Hills Ninja was a Chris Farley movie. Classic. I interviewed him on Loveline MTV, I think, in like 1998 <laughs> for it or whatever. Uh, they made a movie where a blonde guy was a ninja. We were okay with that. Oh, I'm still okay with it. <laughs> I don't know if we'd be okay with it today. You can sing about ninjas. They say, like, like you could have a pocket knife that was called the pocket ninja, and nobody would, would Their care. blenders called ninjas? Yeah, everything's ninja, ninja. You could say, I snuck up on someone like and a ninja. And you're not putting ninjas down. You're saying, we like ninjas. We want to be able to chop like this. I think it's only the voice thing that they... The accent? ...that they took umbrage with with you yeah so jen you are white blonde you cannot do the asian accent you say you do comedy but you're not a real comedian so you can't do it you're privileged you know what we're all privileged that we live here in the u.s but i'm second to the oldest of 12 kids spent a few years living in a mobile home because we had to go through it to get to it and i had to work scrimp save everything to get ahead in life and a lot of people just, you know, read headlines and said, oh, she is such a, you know, B word and terrible things. And, and it, it really was tough, but I'm glad I went through it because I was able to taste what some people have to go through when you only read a book by its cover. And everybody has a story. Everybody has more that's gone on in their life. And I think it's important for people to be a little slower to judge and a little kinder and, and understand how it can really be harmful to have this totally cancel culture w mob mentality because it really it takes away from the fun that we can have in our lives and um, the good. Yeah. Well, here's what helps me sleep at night. All the people who are upset don't care. I know none of them care. And so then I don't care. They're feigning outrage. They're it's not the out new there working order. to make this world a better place. And most of the haters are sitting, you know, on their computers. And they don't care. They're not offended. Most of it is just white women offended for whatever the minority group. Like that, if, if they're offended for some sort of group, they, they're surrogates for right. this group. They're pilot fish on the ethnicity shark of life. Just sucking a little blood and going along for a free ride. Most and they can Asians, all fuck off. That's that's how the only way this thing gets solved. Most Asians love my song. And when I say that, then I'll get one or two Asians that say, well, don't speak for me. And I'm like, okay, I said most. <laughs> but um, part of why it went viral, you saw when I performed it, there was the Asian girl in the audience, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. My last name's Murphy. I launched Jennifer Murphy Beds. I'm not oh. the Murphy Bed heiress. This was a business that I strategized to be able to fund Go Girl Worldwide, my organization to empower girls and women all over the world. Started in 2008. And after several years, I thought, how do I make money to then really take this to the next level? I thought, well, I'm one of 12 kids. Murphy beds are cool, right? They fold right up. I'm knee deep in Murphy beds. They're great. I, I went out one. shopping for Murphy beds I'll the give other you day. a bargain. I'll give you a coupon code. Oh, really? <laughs> but at the time I was launching Jennifer Murphy beds, I had another company say, can you write something that involves a nin like an a, um, a villain? And mm -hmm. we want this saga. And so there's a whole backstory why I wrote the song. My friend Peter impersonates Mr. Chow from The Hangover. So he's like, please, write me <sighs> mm -hmm. in. So all of these things happened. And then that night, a case of Murphy's Law, where I knew all of my friends that came. But one of my girlfriends brought her friend that was really new from China. She didn't know English. And there she's standing right there. And I'm like, ah, uh, I hope she knows that I make funny YouTube videos and drive a Barbie Jeep, a kid's Barbie Jeep. And am self-deprecating, kind of like Michael Scott on The Office. I'm supposed to be a little cringe, mm -hmm. but there's a whole, you know, a, a reason for that. But I didn't want her to be left out, so I made sure to go, over, chop, 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 and she's like, oh, what the heck's going on? But the world... I don't... But, but okay, let, let's, let's break it down for okay. a second. Right. I, I'm Italian. I, I don't mind someone doing an Italian accent. Yeah, People me, do Jennifer. Italian <laughs> accents. It's, it's not a thing. You could make all the gondolier jokes and play all the mandolins you want and do all the, am I, that's a spicy meatball. I don't care. It's not hateful. You shouldn't care. You should all get the fuck over it. It's insane. And, and we should stop trying to like work around these people all the time. No tip This is America. You say whatever the fuck you want. Freedom if you don't like peace. it, then fuck off. And it's sad when people make a thing out of it. Well, like you were saying, it's mostly 
young white, you know, yes. many women, uh, girls that say, I can't well, it's believe also she pussy, did that. It's a lot of pussy whip dudes who are trying to fuck those women. Maybe let's not probably. let's not discount the pussy whip dudes who are trying to get in their panties who pretend they're down with the cause. Well, and they want to be dis- offended on her behalf. But yes. little do they know, she and I became good friends, we're dear friends, and she's going to be in my upcoming movie. Mm. So, oh, it's talk I want to be a ninja the movie. Full circle. And you know what? I'm a go girl, and I never give up. I've gone up and down in life, and I decided not only am I going to double down with coming out with I want to be ninja music video, I'm going to triple down, and I'm going to show those haters, guess what? Now there's the movie. And by the way, the Chinese girl is in the movie with me in a parody scene from off of Kill Bill. And let's see what oh. happens. Did you expect backlash? You, you know, I remember when it. we were at the recording studio and Dennis, my producer, he's like, Jen, lean into the accent more. It's just so funny when you do it. And I love ninjas and I love Asian accents. And I was like, I want to chop, chop. He's like, more, more. But there were a couple times where instead of like on the big screen, I go, I can't say that. That sounds kind of, I said, I'll just say screen. Uh, so I tried to kind of ride the wave. But I knew there might be a few people a little offended, but guess what? I just went for it. It wouldn't have been the same. I want to be ninja. No, I want to be ninja. Agreed. And who cares? <laughs> and, and by the way, I don't know. So it leads to what again? Huh? Something? Mm. There are bigger things going on in our world. And, you know, after I was on The Apprentice, Top 10 Miss USA, had this amazing lifestyle, and then I lost everything. You know, I lost... I had to get a divorce. I lost all my finances and got super poor and was kind of broken. And after I started over, got back on my feet financially, physically, emotionally, I thought, what do I want to do to help others that, you know, might be going through something? And that was the reason I started Go Girl Worldwide. And then when I started making my funny YouTube videos and I saw that people loved the little inspirational messages along with comedy, that was what, you know, it, I was like, this is my purpose. And even though it was really tough to go through all of the hate, I do think here it's like six or seven years later, my dream from being a little girl making a movie is coming true. And so that's something I want all people out there to know that never give up and you can get creative and, you know, and there are great people out there and the haters sometimes can help. How bad did the hate get? It was, so we launched Jennifer Murphy Beds. I worked on it with these guys, these partners, for about a year. Right after The Apprentice, I bought the domain name, Mm jennifermurphybeds.com, and I always wanted to do it. And then I met these Murphy Bed guys. They had 23 stores, wall beds and more. I go, guys, that's kind of boring. What about Jennifer Murphy Beds? And I love marketing, and I'll make videos, and you know, the social media and website. And we worked for quite a while. And I thought, this is going to be it. And we do the party. And I thought, you know, the my performance doesn't put it into context, where you see me with the pink superhero cape and driving the Jeep and chow. He's so cute that he's funny. He's a villain. And there's a happy ending. Not that kind of happy ending. (laughs) But there's a good ending. And, um, and So I thought, I'll just put the video, my performance, on my YouTube channel just to see what my followers think, because I love my song. It's kind of catchy. And it was just kind of a silent thing for a few months. All of a sudden, one day, my partners called, and they go, Jen, we're getting phone calls. They want to come burn down our store. Mm. Like... And, but this is after I'm getting the biggest commission checks of my life. We're selling Jennifer Murphy beds like hotcakes, and I thought, thank God, like, this is it, it's happening, and I can do Go Girl TV, Go Girl Tunes, all of these things, and then it crashed and burned, and it was, it was terrible, and um, I definitely had to let go of my ego, when you go from, oh, Miss Oregon, top 10, the apprentice, to racist, privileged, Asian hater, Murphy Bed heiress, and, um, all of my other video clients, that was like my bread and butter, right? My mm-hmm. rent, my my money to pay my bills, they all canceled me as well. They said, we love you, but we're getting terrible emails, like millions of haters that they, they would just read the headlines and they wouldn't. And it started with a guy on Reddit called Angry Asian Man. 
Mm-hmm. He wrote this one headline, but at the very end of the article, he goes, but I don't really think it's racist. But <laughs> everybody read the headline. Mm-hmm. And then the media ran with it. So after I lost that deal and my other deals, it took several years for me to f- get back again. You know, a ninja, you'll learn in the movie what the word ninja means, but I won't give it away right now. But I thought if the media, you know, people read what they see in writing. And I thought, what if I become my own press? Mm. What if I launch, I've always wanted to have a magazine, so Go Girl Worldwide Magazine. And I tell my own story along with other women and great guys' stories as well. So that was a good move and very exciting. I've had the magazine for about five years now, and it's all over the world digitally and some print. Um, And then it was a few years later when I was like, okay, it's time to make the movie. Yeah, I think the mistake that we're currently making and that maybe you made, which I've realized is a a mistake, is people, when they get accused of something, they go, oh, no, 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 I have no hatred in my heart, or I love Asians, or I have black friends, or, you know, blah, 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 (laughs) blah, blah. Or, you know, I get accused of being a misogynist all the time, you know, and then people go, I feel sorry for your daughter, and I'm like, okay, (laughs) And then I don't go. No, no, no. I'm a girl. She lo- her. No, she likes her daddy. I just go fuck off, because they they get you backpedaling as if you, you do like you hate in, Asians yeah. or you don't have black friends or you're misogynist or whatever the fuck it is. My daughter, my daughter's life is so much better than any <laughs> other female I've ever met in my entire life. I mean, the chasm between my sister's life <laughs> and my <laughs> and my daughter's life. Are you? kidding me and my dad wasn't even a misogynist and so you just own it you own who you are you know who you are and well you- first off why am i explaining to assholes that i like black people or that i would never hurt asians or that i'm not a misogynist to assholes who don't think you are that person they literally it's like uh, you're an arsonist i'm not an arsonist yes you are i found a lighter in your glove box oh no that's not my lighter it's like <laughs> fuck off until you see me Take a structure and burn it to the ground, then you need to shut up. But everyone starts backpedaling. They get on their heels. They start explaining that they have Asian friends or that the woman at the party. I didn't even know the woman at the party. She was Asian, but she showed up. You know, it's like, just tell her to fuck off. It'll get get it to go away a lot faster. Because all they want is you backpedaling. That's all they want. That They want some dominion. They don't care. They have no interest in you and your feelings toward Asians or ninjas or anybody else. They really don't care. I totally agree with you. And I think there were times when I was still learning how to deal with this where I was like, but I do love Asians. I I mean, I love everybody. It sounds stupid. Of course, I don't need to say I love Asians. I I am like a good hearted, happy hearted person. But don't you think it's kind of cool, though, that the Asian woman that they all assume hates me, she was so inspired that she started competing in beauty pageants, became Miss New York. She got back into dancing. She started to just flourish in life. This morning, she texted me. She said, Jen, I just bought my dream house this morning. And I'm just so proud of her. And I think the fact that I was able to get her in my movie as like, you're going to you're gonna love this, this whole, but that for me is a just. Well, here's the, the tearing uh, all right, here's. I know it's become emotional. So let I'm me sorry. Step this in. is a comedy show. Let me step in. <laughs> okay. The other racist opinion, or the other, the real racism, is assuming that the 28 year old Asian lady who's Chinese and not Japanese, where ninjas are from, or anywhere else. Actually, they did originate in China. Oh, and they you'll did. Learn that. And then they the went wall. to Japan. Yes. Okay. My bad. The point is, is. Just the notion that this woman speaks for Asians is insane and racist. <laughs> like when you have a black friend, you're like, Jerome, tell him. What do you think? It's like, well, you think you speak for black people because you're one of 40 million black people in the United States and then billions over in the worldwide? Like I speak for white people? It's a totally racist trope that this person speaks for somebody, which they do yeah. that all the time. It's like a congresswoman, you know, black congresswoman getting up there explaining to all the people what black people think. That's some racist right. shit. That's and by the, the way, you don't sound anything like Candace Owens. Last time I checked, she was a black chick, but you don't 
stand for anything she stands for. So why are we even anointing people? You know, like right. race hustlers. Well, and Adam, why should I be the Al Sharpton should speak for black people? The fucking race hustler speaks for black these people? These are self-proclaimed representatives. Yes. Also, why should I be the historian on Asian culture? I just made a funny song and chop chow down to Chinatown rhymed, and, but I didn't know that they actually did originate in China. But it's like the ninjas because so many yes because so many people just hate me so much because maybe I got a little bit of Asian culture wrong. It's like guys, you know how much research? No, they don't. Research, they don't like you because you're blonde and you did the voice. I know. That's it. Yeah, and then you, the tell like, me, do you like the accent? Yeah, it's funny. I don't give a shit. <laughs> look, here's the whole thing. I, I mean, look, I play a pretend tiny guitar in my YouTube videos. I'm a dork, and if they can't, if they don't get the joke, they turn don't the care. Channel. They don't. It's not that they get it or don't get it. They're not upset. They don't give a shit. Nobody gives a shit. They care about themselves. They're narcissists. This is part of their narcissism is trying to tear you down. But they don't speak for anyone, and they don't care for anybody, for anyone. And like if Julianne Huff wants to dress as one of the oranges, the new black chicks for Halloween, that's not blackface. That's her having a favorite character on a popular TV show. Nobody cares, by the way. Yeah, Nobody how cares. Cultural appreciation but they, they always act want like to call they it care appropriation if you want to wear your hair in cool dreadlocks as you think it's cool is that really putting down a certain culture i don't i don't think so and i think the world it, i really hope that we're going to the you know we're full circle because when i first came out with my song we were at the height of cancel culture mm -hmm. and i think people are getting sick of it and i think shows like yours where you like just say it like it is <laughs> Um, and just call people out on certain things. And, you know, it's okay. I, I'm so excited for comedy to come back. No. And I think you guys are going to love my movie. It's a little kind of old school humor and a little slapstick. And I'm sure the haters will cry. But some of them are going to be like, oh, I kind of like it. Be nice of comedy. Well, comedy's coming back. The sad part is a lot of comedians bought into all this bullshit, which well, is pathetic. Well, you saw what I hey, I love Bobby Lee and Andrew Santino, but they were kind of hypocritical, hypocritical to me because they said, "Jen, you can't do the accent because you're not a real comedian." And I said, "But Andrew, you and Bobby do it all the time." It wasn't, but I think they were trying to kind of cover their bases and. If they put me down, they would be a little safer. But it's okay. I'll have a maybe a sword fight with them sometime, and we'll see who wins. Yeah, I like those guys. But comedians' approach should just be free speech, jokes all the time, yeah. every time. Doesn't matter I'm who's saying it. Be... That's that's your default position as a comedian. Right. Say whatever you want. Yeah, I'm not trying to be them, and they are. They have a much huger following than me, but. Let me do my thing and drive my little Barbie Jeep in my YouTube videos, and a lot of people like it. And don't don't tear me down when I'm trying to make people laugh. Yeah, but well, I, I forgive them. I forgive them. That's big of you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, do we have the trailer for Beverly Hills Ninja, which could have been Farley's last movie or one of them? It was one. Of, I don't think it was his last. One. Well, probably probably not his last. But man, he didn't go too far after. After that, I just want to see how it holds up. There's only one hope. So sorry. I was told that I could find a ninja here. One mysterious beauty. I will accept your dangerous mission. A deadly counterfeiting ring. But if it isn't the great white ninja. And Chris Farley in a Kung Pao adventure. <laughs> Beverly Hills Ninja. Hilarious. Still holds up, by the way. Hilarious. I, I watched it within the last year. You did? Yeah. Really? I did. You weren't Thoughts offended on too. behalf of your culture, <laughs> gotta, your people, or whatever you I are? I gotta admit, I've never seen the movie. I will say, I'm speaking for all Asians, I, was, <laughs> I wasn't offended by that movie because it, I didn't find it... It wasn't insulting to us. Like he was, like yeah. they were honoring it. They were right. paying homage. They were well. That's that's the other part where you, when you're naming your football team after an Indian tribe, or you're naming anything, you name your boat, your team, your whatever, and you name it after.
after something, it's always an homage yeah. to whoever you're naming it after because they fight with ferocity or they're noble or they're warriors or whatever it is. So the right. fact... I want to be a ninja. I really want to. And I love ninjas. My favorite YouTuber when I first discovered YouTube, Ryan Higa, <sighs> one of his first YouTube videos was how to be n ninja. And it was so fun and cute and I was inspired by it. And so... Yeah, why, you know, we need to be able to let people pay honor in a fun way. I, I, just, I just think, yeah, if there's no hate or hateful intent. I, I don't even then. care. You just do whatever you want. There's enough real problems. And, mm. and by the way, the sticks and stones thing, who gives a fuck? And it doesn't inspire people to do anything. Like, remember, these are the same people who said violent video games and violent rock music doesn't motivate anyone to do anything and now 10 minutes later it's like somebody sees this they're going to be motivated to go out and attack asians or blacks or whatever they're, they're full of shit they're all liars if you really want to get there's a couple things uh i went famously as mr t when i was about 19 for halloween blackface <laughs> mohawk everything uh people have told me to i don't know be quiet about it or take the picture down or whatever it is. I put it up all the time. I was a big Mr. T fan and it's Halloween and I'm dressing like Mr. T. That's 100% homage to Mr. T. Right. Fuck right off. It was not an A. You know, can I high five you? Yes. Blackface is a different thing. This is not You're that. Right. And that's why I dressed as Mr. T. Uh, beginning, middle and end. I liked Mr. T. So I dressed like him. When I went out to dress like Mr. T, I had to do everything. I grew a beard. I grew a beard. I, I worked on this shit for three months. I grew a Mr. <laughs> T beard. I shaved my head in a mohawk. I let the beard attach to the side hair Ooh. over my ear. Dedication. Full Mr. Oh T. My God. And I Look went black. Wow. Because I wanted to replicate Wait. Mr. T. That's you? That's right. You That's nailed me. it, man. She thought it was Mr. T. Wow. She <laughs> I pity the fool who doesn't recognize Adam Speaking Carolla. Speaking of black and also um, you mentioned sports teams, can I do a little plug for my sponsor? Can yes. Loud? And then well, I want everyone to find Mrs. Livingston from Courtship of Eddie's Father. If you can get her talking, that that is your sweet spot. If you're looking for female Asian accents, okay, maybe Not, I need to. I need some training on that. Yours is fine, <laughs> but Mrs. Livingston, she really nails it from the courtship. Bill Bixby, courtship of Eddie's father. Oh. she was the prototype for all female Asian. Now she was Asian, but she's probably an actress who put it, who put it on. Yeah. I would think. Billy Dee Williams also in the news for seeing oh, this yeah. too. Did you see that? On Mar? On Club Random. Yeah. He, he said actors should be do, should do anything they want to do. And he was yeah. uh, praising Othello. Yeah. you. It's called acting. Uh, well, all right. Sorry. And acting and making a movie. This is my first movie. And I had a business plan. I pitched investors. I got it funded. And mm -hmm. it's been quite a challenge. Um, I was icing my knee and hip on the way here because I do my own stunts. But I was able to get creative with some uh, sponsors in order to be able to pull off the movie. And I partnered with Impact MVP. Mm -hmm. This is humic and fulvic acids. You have 72 minerals and reishi mushrooms. It's amazing. And pro athletes and um, football players, they love it. And you put it into water mm -hmm. and it makes your water black. That's mm -hmm. where the tie-in was. I was like, let me just do my little pitch. <laughs> I'm the chief creative officer of uh, the company, and it's incredible. This is a brand new bottle except for what I just had, and so this is my gift to you. Oh, thanks. I'll you put it in my water. It's incredible. It detoxes all your major organs. It gives you energy. It, it's the Earth's vitamin, and mm -hmm. it, it gives you, it replenishes with everything you need. So I just wanted to mention that, and you'll see I have a few viral commercials coming out where – You'll see why you want to drink your Impact MVP if you're about to go into a sword fight. All right. Well, speaking of products, yeah, Adam, so you, you're in the market for a Murphy bed. Oh, yeah. So, so I want to bring back Jennifer Murphy beds. Yeah. My Murphy bed partners, they sat me down when the fire Jennifer the was fan. an old company. There, well, sorry. There was, oh, sorry. There was, when I was growing up out here, there's Riviera convertible beds. Mm. There used to be a commercial. Uh, like live on the Riviera convertible beds. That is like <laughs> real smart stuff. They're only in the reupholstery business right now. 
Riviera. Riviera reupholstery. And there was a Jennifer. On the Riviera. There was Jennifer yeah. like couches or something like that. Yeah, there like was that. Jennifer furniture. And I thought Jennifer Murphy beds will be just, I can't wait. So many great creative. Of course, the first line in my song is, I shut my Murphy bed. Yep. And I was so excited about this. And the two guys, the partners, you know, we were going to tr- turn 23 locations into Jennifer Murphy beds. The second location was in San Ramon. And we were going to have the proceeds of the sales for the first month donated to a woman's um, safe passage healing place. And when they sat me down, they said, we've been bombarded with these, you know, haters and you need to sign this apology letter. (laughs) And you also need to make a vow that you'll never make a funny video ever again. You're our Kathy Ireland. And Mm. I said, I am not. I am Jennifer Murphy and I cannot make that promise. And the deal was done. And but you know what? I'm glad that I stuck to my guns. Murphy beds have come a long way. They have. And let me tell you, I. They started in 19, like. 16 or something crazy. I, I went and like toured Murphy beds. And let me tell Did you. it just look like an empty store? Let me tell you how the Murphy bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, lo- it looked like a, a, a bookstore with no books. And no, it's like, <laughs> uh, yeah. A lot of cabinets. Well, they do. All right. So they make them good looking now. Built in desk for gamers. Yeah. They, and- they make them. They're functional. But, but here's what happened. I was talking about building a house in Nevada. And then I got these uh, almost 18-year-old twins, you know. Oh, girls? Boy, girl. Oh, cute. I don't like the girl. They're not identical, and then, obviously. Uh, <laughs> and the boy, I used to like, we started hanging out with this Asian kid. And oh, I was great. like, and now that's off, too. <laughs> so it was kind of over for 2 for me. But the deal was, is somebody said, well, you're designing this house. <laughs> You have to have bedrooms for your kids, like always waiting there for, kids, for your kids, them. you know? Yeah. And uh, and I said, all right, so let me get this straight. I'm going to dedicate two rooms full time to these kids who are A, going to be off at college or off doing something somewhere in some other state and B, don't really like hanging out anyway. You know what I mean? Like, okay. Three days a year, they're going to come back, but I'm just going to take these two rooms and I'm just going to sequester them because they're going to be bedrooms. Right. And then if I want to use it for an office, I can just sit on the edge of the bed with my computer in my lap or something. And so I said, no, I want these two rooms to be a usable, like an office, Mm -hmm. her office, his office or whatever. And, but they're like, but you need bedrooms for your kids. I was like, there's no bigger waste than a bed just sitting there for a kid that never uses it. So then we got into the Murphy. You're almost inviting them too easily to come back. That's right. I want them to be a a barrier to entry. You at least have to pull the bed down if you're going to come and stay. Right. So that's where the Murphy bed. So now you can have a room that looked like a nice office and then. On the off chance, twice a year, when the kids showed up, just pull it down. down. It's I love it. I still will relaunch Jennifer Murphy beds, and maybe the bed sings my song as it comes down. It's very mean to stealth, right? These Murphy mm-hmm. beds. It's perfect for people that live in small apartments or high rises, or you know, I just I and love it's good it. for cheaters too. <laughs> Because comically, the woman's there and the someone's banging on the door and they go, get up there! And they mash him. The, the, the husband's home and the guy gets mashed in there. It's, it's comedy cheating. Uh-huh. Boom. I told easy. my Murphy bed partners, I go, guys, hang in there with me. This is lightning in a bottle. We're getting, if one out of a hundred haters buy a bed, we're good. But they just, that they didn't have the stamina of a real ninja. So. We have the uh, courtship of Eddie's father with the... Um, prototype of all female stereotypical Asian voices. It's Mrs. Livingston. Courtship of Eddie's father. Eddie? Eddie, what are you doing awake? I'm doing my homework. I didn't know you had homework. Sure. We just started getting it. Don't you know how much older I'm getting? Eddie, yeah. I have brought you 30 chocolate multiple you asked for. <laughs> Thank you. I thought you would be asleep. What are they for? Lost a bet in school. Eddie, you were gambling? <laughs> well, she looked like a sure thing. Sure thing? I'll be asleep right away, Mrs. Livingston. 
All right. Your father telephoned. He said he will be back from San Francisco tomorrow morning. Do you understand? Wakata. Wakata. <laughs> Good. I will be sleeping on the couch inside, and if there's anything you want. <laughs> Eddie? Eddie, if there's anything All you right. need. All right, that's Mrs. Livingston. But I people used to will watch... say she can say it because she's Asian. Yeah, that I can't. but that's the tone you're going for. I. That's the holy grail of Asian voices is Her Mrs. Sounds, Livingston. Does she sound more Japanese or is she Chinese? Japanese. Yeah, mine I don't is know a little more Chinese. <laughs> no, I don't not recognize the difference. But you know what I With do? With food, I don't. In the my movie, I Want to Be Ninja, comes out next month, I do say one word in Japanese. Oh, you do? Yeah. You want to hear it? No, nah, we're good. It's really... It's, okay, tell us. Okay, the guy giving me my sword, you know, he says, I will only make you a sword if you promise you'll only use it for the good. And I have to say yes. So I say, hi! 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 Oh, <laughs> I love hi. He loves hi. I wish I had hi. <laughs> I talk and people just stare at their phone and they don't make a noise. I like the hi. Yeah. Hi is great. It's the ultimate... It felt good saying it. It's the copy that. It's copy that. It's also kind of great groundlings training. You know, it's yes and with one syllable. Hey, you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? It's I, basically just going, hey. It's got some power to it. I, I agree. It's, it's, it's audible. It says you've been heard and it's affirming. Yeah. Whereas all I do is talk and people go, you know, not for all people or the wall. <laughs> and I go, but what? If, don't you agree that there's too much? I don't know. I think it's the other. Like, all I do is talk to people and go, but I, I, I don't have any heist in my life. It's all like, well, yeah, but, you know, it's like, yeah, but still people. Yeah. I used to watch Courtship of Eddie's Father, just his room. Just I'd be like, where to get those two sheets on his bed? Why is his bed so big? Where'd he get that lamp? Where's that table come from? Like, he's got a desk. There's a desk in his room with another lamp. He's got a separate lamp on a desk. And then he has another lamp on an, a night questions. table. Like, I, I, my mind was blown when I would just see someone in a big made bed wearing pajamas. I was in underwear and a t-shirt with both arms going through one sleeve, you know, just kind of waddling around going, oh, it's hot. We're hot in here. Like, just seeing made beds and <laughs> yeah. nightstands and lamps and pajamas and stuff, right? Carpet. Just weird. There was, was one weird? time growing up where we were packed in, like, sardines in this mobile home while my dad was trying to build the house. And there were 10 of us kids at the time. He built us triple bunk beds. And there still weren't enough beds. That's Three Stooges shit. Yeah. And my sister, Juliana, would, can I sleep with you tonight? <laughs> like, you know, kids on the couch. We got through it. And, and we ended up, I helped my dad build the house that my parents still live in when I was 13. And, you know, I helped lay every piece of hardwood floor. But those memories are really fun. But yeah, watching, you know, some of these movies and like wow that must have been interesting you know to be mm. an only child or but triple bunk and loft my sister had a loft because her room was so tiny that if you put a mattress in it would take you couldn't open the door <laughs> yeah so she had to have the loft i lived in a house with a law i built a loft in one of my rent houses. i built other people a lot i i'm like four or five for five with lofts mm -hmm. but loft always means s square footage can't stand up all the way it's a oh <laughs> you can't even sit up no as, as a matter of fact my when i built my loft i had my head right by the air vent in the ceiling the heater we didn't have air conditioning but we had like the heater vent mm -hmm. and it was just like a pipeline going into my name <laughs> my roommate's room and <laughs> i would hear sometimes it was good but i had a roommate john who was like i'm up on the loft I never built a ladder. I used to get on this chair with wheels on it and try <laughs> oh to. Oh my god! It was rough if you were drinking because it was like, oh shit, it was oh a little bit god. dicey with a rolling yeah. desk chair trying to jump up there with a couple of Jägermeister shots in you. But um, I remember one time I was laying there and my roommate was like, "I'm leaving for San Francisco, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning," and I'm like, "All right, good luck." And he's like, "Yeah, I'm driving straight through," and I'm like, "Okay." I'm sleeping by this vent. I hear his alarm go off. 
it's coming through the vent uh-huh. like it's amplified. <laughs> I hear him hit the snooze bar. <laughs> Ten minutes later, <laughs> so he hit the snooze bar 141 oh times. It was like fucking noon by the time he got out. But I had this stupid <laughs> vent. And getting off the thing onto the rolling chair was always a... Uh, oh, you're like, do I get off? Do I go and shut it off? or? You know, it's, it was a built-in stopgap measure. Duh. You couldn't bang any fat chicks. It <laughs> prevented you God. from banging fat chicks. You just no way, especially when you're drunk. There's just no way you could get them up. Get them up there. While we're on the topic of beds, and then we can mm. veer off. But one last little story. I remember in that same mobile home, um, I actually had a regular bed, not a triple bunk bed, and. Um, my older sister, Jessica, love you, Jess, but um, we called her the Wicked Witch, and anytime if she stubbed her toe or she was riding her bike, we'd go, da dun da dun da you know? And because for some reason, we would all gang up on her. Um, she was mad at me for some reason, and she wrote the word on my mattress, butthead, right under where my, my head rested at night, and I saw it. She did a, like a Sharpie, and I was just like, Mom, Jessie wrote. She goes, Jessica, you need to sleep in that bed now. So Jessica had to lay with her head right above butt. <laughs> she had to sleep in her own mess. She, she made that bed. <laughs> she, she, has to sleep she had in to it. sleep in the bed she made. Triple bunker. Yeah. Uh, let me give a plug to you, Jennifer. Uh, I Want to Be a Ninja, the movie. It's available for purchase on your website, yeah. I Want to Be a Ninja.com. If you buy it before the movie launches May 10th, you get the digital comic book for free. Mm-hmm. And the comic book is part of the movie. So you'll see that um, I have a movie in the movie, actually. So it's kind of a documentary style dramedy, comma, and then a YouTube style movie within it. Very unique. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anything's ever been like this. And when the boy buys the comic book and opens the first page, the comic book comes to life. So there's a little bit of animation, some comic book element. I have a 65-person orchestra. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, and um, my composer, George Toome, they're calling him the next John Williams. He's amazing, and we scored the full music score. I spent a lot on the music for a smaller budget movie, but it was a choice I made, kind of like when Bugs Bunny and Elmer Fudd did the opera stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, Kill the Wabbit? Yeah, got to kill the Wabbit, the Wabbit, yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's kind of fun to have big music for Can't say Wabbit comedy. with a uh, Asian accent. I think that's offensive. How, yeah, they eat rabbit though, right? I don't know. I, I would. I'm going to so. go with, yeah. I feel like Asians <laughs> will eat it. anything. And, uh, Once you get to squid, you're at everything. Or frogs, yeah. You get to squid and octopus, you can eat anything. Eel. Once you get to eel, mm. squid, and octopus, everything's on the table you are potentially. My mouth water. That's what I'm saying. You can eat anything. All right. Uh, that's the plug. Thank and you. Uh, Orny Adams as well. I'm going to be in Salt Lake City. Wise Guys coming up May 3rd and 4th. Four shows over there. Just go to amcrow.com for all my live shows. Until next time, Sam, for Jennifer and Chris and Orny. Thank you for having me. Sure. Say it. Mahalo. Mahalo.